and he was keenly interested to listen to the present presentation <laughs> so uh, he's, he is he has also joined and it's uh, our pleasure to welcome him and uh, ibi joshi award mein kaun de raha hai lecture uh, that is uh, dr dk yadav uh, a mustard breeder from iri he has been awarded <coughs> So, Dr. Rashmi, it's uh, two thirty now. We can yes, uh, start. Yes. Uh, Rof, Rof was here. Yes. Yes. We can start. A very good afternoon to all, esteemed chair of the session, Dr. P. K. Gupta, honorable director and vice chancellor IRI, Dr. A. K. Singh, dean and joint director education IRI, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, project director W. T. C. School coordinators, heads of different divisions. professors scientific fraternity of iri other distinguished guests joining online ladies and gentlemen a very good afternoon to all i dr rof on behalf of post graduate school iri faculty and students welcome you all to this afternoon session of award lecture series for noon we had excellent presentations by recipient of su kumar basu memorial award shri hari krishna shastri memorial award and best agricultural extension scientist ever now we shall commence the prestigious dr b p paul medal award lecture to begin the program with auspicious lamp lighting ceremony sam kalyanam arogyam dhana sampada shubham purutvam kalyanam arogyam dhana sampada शत्रुबुद्धिविनाशा दीपज्योतिर्नमोस्ते दीपज्योतिर्नमोस्ते आई रिक्वेस्ट द चेयरपर्सन एंड अदर डिग्नेटरीज फॉर फ्लोरल ट्रिब्यूट टू डॉक्टर बीपी पॉल may no request to our dean and joint director education for formal welcome address thank you rof uh, good afternoon to all uh, at the outside i take this opportunity to welcome all of you on this occasion of 18th dr b p paul medal lecture award so before i uh, proceed further i would like to briefly tell about the tradition of our convocation this is a we are going to celebrate this year our 60th convocation and we have a week long program and uh, we all started on uh, 6th of february with the presentation for the merit medal by the msc students for the uh, nabad professor vl chopra gold medal and the merit medal of iri on on first day we had msc students presentation and second day we had for the same medals phd students subsequently the third day we had the uh, significant educational achievements by the professors of various disciplines which are 26 disciplines uh, in the form school mode form so uh, this is only briefly to tell you now we are on the fourth day of the uh, celebration of uh, 60th convocation week program and today we had the award lectures and uh, before noon we had three award lectures and now we are having the session fourth which is uh, the uh, award lecture on the uh, bp paul medal so i am very pleased to uh, welcome our chairman of uh, this award lecture uh, session dr pk gupta professor pk gupta very well known geneticist and plant breeder from uh, he is at present emeritus professor at chaudhary charan singh university uh, merit so we welcome come you whole heartedly i also welcome our deputy director general crop sciences uh, dr t r sharma who is who is here and uh, we welcome you sir from the core of our heart to uh, coming here and uh, gracing the occasion uh, i also warmly welcome our director dr a k singh who is uh, the guiding force and the pillar behind the uh, this whole convocation week program and i uh, 
warmly welcome uh, the awardee of uh, this particular award lecture, Dr. Firoz Hussain. So congratulations to Dr. Firoz Hussain and welcome Dr. Firoz. And on this equation, I also would like to welcome all the uh, joint directors, uh, project director, WTC, heads of the uh, divisions, professors, faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen, all those who have joined and who are listening to us online. And uh, to start with, um, um, I would like to briefly tell about this uh, BP Paul Medal. Uh, Dr. BP Paul Medal was instituted in the year 1995 in the memory of late Dr. BP Paul, former director IRI, and the first director general of the recognized ICAR. He made significant contributions in the field of crop improvement, particularly wheat and roses. Dr. Paul was highly decorated and honored with the awards, both at national and international level. He is remembered by agricultural scientists with great honor and respect. The credit goes to late Dr. B.P. Paul for the establishment of the Postgraduate School of IRI in the year 1958. You might be knowing that Dr. Paul willed a major portion of his movable and immovable property to the institution that is IRI, where he worked all through his service career. According to his will, Dr. B.P. Paul award is given to a scientist working at IRI or its regional stations for best piece of original research in the field of genetics and plant breeding of the last three to five years period. This triennial award, this is triennial award, this carries a cash prize of rupees 50,000 and a medal. Uh, before we began this, uh, Dr. P.K. Uh, Gupta was asking about some of the awardees, sir. Doctor, our director has also mentioned. And uh, last time it was given to Doctor Dharmendra Singh from uh, Genetics uh, Division, and then Doctor G P Singh also was a recipient, and Doctor D K Yadwa, the previous uh, uh, recipients. So, uh, with these words, um, I once again welcome all of you on this very prestigious B P Paul Lecture Award today. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, ma'am. I now request our honorable director to kindly introduce the esteemed chairperson of this session to the August gathering. Thank you, Rauf, and uh, my warm welcome and regards to Professor P.K. Gupta, who has kindly agreed to chair this uh, very important award lecture. I am also uh, grateful to Dr. T.R. Sarma, DDG Craft Science, who has joined uh, in this program. Uh, to, to listen to this presentation. All my colleagues, students, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Professor P.K. Gupta is a household name. Anybody who has studied uh, genetics uh, or agriculture that way uh, would not have missed uh, his uh, books and uh, his uh, teaching through his books. Uh, such a wonderful teacher. Uh, his journey actually started, uh, you know, after doing masters uh, from Merit College, Merit from Agra University, where he uh, stood first in Merit in MSc Botany in the entire university, availed a uh, Commonwealth Scholarship in Canada to do his PhD in wheat cytogenetics at the University of Manitoba. And on return, he joined Gorakhpur University for a brief period of two years. And after that, uh, in 1969, he joined the uh, CCS University Merit. It was Merit University Merit then as reader. And he has continued from that day onward to uh, working at this university. Uh, he worked there as reader, professor, and dean uh, of the Faculty of Agriculture and retired in December 1996. Uh, his research uh, academic interest uh, involves almost all areas of plant science including genetics, breeding, cytogenetics, biometrical genetics, mutation research, quantitative genetics, molecular marker technology, and mapping, uh, transgenics, genome editing, and whatnot. You name a field, uh, and Dr. Gupta has evolved with the evolution in science. And uh, his understanding of all these subjects is phenomenal. Uh, it's a record for, I think, uh, for anyone uh, to have guided 75 PhD students. Uh, sir, uh, this is only you 
uh, could do it. It's not possible for anyone else to have 75 students guided, more than 350 research paper published in peer journals of review, and his contribution to human resource development in the field of genetics and molecular breeding is phenomenal, directly and indirectly through his students. Among his students, you know, Dr. Balyan, P.C. Sarma, Raji Varsne, uh, Manoj Prasad, Joy, Pawan, and you name many of them, they have, uh, you know, their own standing in their field and uh, they, they acquired the knowledge from him. They have proliferated that knowledge throughout their academic career, not only in the country, outside country as well. Uh, presently, Dr. Gupta is working as INSA senior scientist and the university has appointed him as honorary uh, emeritus professor for lifetime to serve science and society. He is a member of about a dozen scientific uh, societies in India and abroad. And he is fellow of all the uh, leading uh, national science academy, FNA, FNAC, FAC, and uh, fellow of NAS. Uh, I have had uh, very close interactions with Professor Gupta since 1992, and it has been a pleasure to learn from him and to grow uh, with uh, science. Uh, I'm extremely pleased to welcome you, sir, to chair this uh, award lecture and uh, listen to your uh, concluding remarks at the end after the presentation is over and your opening remarks with uh, welcome up uh, with the introduction of the uh, speaker. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I feel honored to request the chairman of the session to kindly introduce the meritorious awardee and the speaker of the session. <clears throat> um, I have great pleasure to become a part of this important award lecture. And you know that when Ashok invites me for any assignment, whether it is a lecture or like this assignment to be the chairman, it's always a pleasure to accept the invitation. Dr. Firosh Hussain, who is the recipient of BP Paul Award Lecture, is known to me for almost about 10, 15 years now because he won several projects from the Department of Biotechnology in the field of molecular biology, where I was the chairman of the task force. And therefore, I had opportunity to listening to the work done by him at several occasions. I also interacted with him at several occasions when I visited IRI to deliver lectures because he was instrumental in organizing those lectures <clears throat> at a number of, number of occasions. I have seen the biodata of Dr. Firoz Hussain, phenomenal, you see, because uh, no, nobody can match, I think. Uh, because he has always been throughout first class first, first position at BSC AG from West Bengal, uh, Vidhan University, and then MSc from Pantanagar, and then PhD from, from IRI in 2005. And soon after PhD, completing his PhD, he was selected for Indian Agricultural Research Services, I hope, and joined the Department of Division of Genetics at IERI. And from 2005 onwards, he has made significant contributions to the field of molecular breeding and maize breeding. He was appointed as a scientist, continued as a scientist from 2005 to 2012, and then as senior scientist from 2012 to 2018, and in 18, he became a principal scientist and is currently is the head of the maize program at IERI. And this quality protein maize, which he has developed, I have seen that he has developed about 12 varieties, hybrid varieties, we have, which have widely grown. And particularly these 12 varieties are particularly in the area of biofortification because he improved the nutritional qualities in maize in a number of these hybrid varieties. And I had also known him when he was associated with Dr. H.S. Gupta, who was the director of Indian Agricultural Research Institute. So it is a great pleasure for me to introduce him. And for the award, I think a, a very correct selection has been made 
in giving this award to and Dr. B.P. Pal, in whose name this particular award has been given, uh, has been known to me for a very long time. He has been a source of inspiration. And Dr. Swaminathan himself thinks that B.P. Paul was a phenomenal scientist uh, right, right from the beginning. Both M.S. Swaminathan and Dr. B.P. Paul, they are fellow of Royal Society. And it's a great honor for the country that we had scientists like B.P. Paul and M.S. Swaminathan. With these few introduction, I request Dr. Firoz Hussain to deliver the lecture. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So, is my slides visible, sir? Yes, Firoz, go ahead. Yes, yes. Okay. Esteemed uh, Professor uh, P.K. Gupta, sir, Chairman of the session, Honorable Director, Dr. A.K. Singh, uh, Dean and Joint Director of Education, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, Dr. T.R. Sharma, Honorable uh, DDG Crop Sciences, Dr. D.K. Adhava, Honorable A.P. Deceeds, uh, Heads and Professors of the Divisions, Heads of the Regional Stations, uh, dignitaries and the distinguished colleagues of the Institute. A very good afternoon. Uh, I thank uh, Chairman Sir uh, for, uh, uh, for giving a generous introduction. So thank you very much, Sir. And at the outset, I thank the members of the jury and Indian Agriculture Research Institute for selecting my candidate here for this prestigious 18th BP Paul Medal 2021. So for you, I stand to deliver my lecture on the work uh, on development of biofortified and specialty maize through integrated approach of conventional and molecular breeding. And before I uh, go to my presentation, with humility, I pay my tribute to Dr. Ikki Paul, who has been the legendary plant breeder and who has founded the basis of uh, the breeding for rust resistance in wheat and IRI which led to the development of several popular in series uh, wheat varieties. Started my journey in 2005 when I joined as a fresh air scientist at Division of Genetics, the dream place of any uh, plant breeder in India. And from day one, I've started working on maize, which has emerged as a very, very important crop uh, after rice and wheat and provides livelihoods to millions of people throughout the world. I've categorized my presentation to six different heads, and I shall be making a brief presentation for each, under each of these heads. Getting breeding for nutritional quality traits, we, we now know that the import, in nutrition has become a paramount import, importance, especially during the time of COVID pandemic. And if we look at the maize grains, uh, it is deficient in, we all know, in two essential amino acids, lysine and tryptophan. And OPQ gene is the one which enhances lysine and tryptophan by nearly twofold. So under the accelerated crop improvement program, which was led by Dr. Pete Gupta from the DBT side, we have introduced this OPQ gene in three of the genetic background. And in 2017, three hybrids, PUSA HPM4 improved, PUSA HPM8 improved, and PUSA HPM9 improved was released and notified through CBRC in 2017. And all these hybrids have been are having higher level of lysine and tryptophan. We've also started working on a new gene called uh, OPEC-16. And OPEC-16 is the gene which, has, which is present on chromosome eight, while OPEC-2 is present on chromosome uh, seven. Now all over the world, QPM breeding means OPEC-2. Now we have started working on OPEC-16. And when we combine OPEC-2 with OPEC-16, we found that there is an enhancement of 50 to 87% of lysine and tryptophan across different genetic backgrounds. So this is a huge in improvement of nutritional quality just by combining OPEC-16. We all know in India, white maize is more preferred as a food over yellow maize. So we also, also improve our white maize for lysine and tryptophan where we combine OPEC-2 and OPEC-16 and where we can found, I find that there is an improvement almost 50% of lysine and tryptophan over the OPEC-based QPM hybrids. And the greatest advantage of this OPEC-16 has been that it does not induce in a softness or, or the, or the opaqueness, which is a negative trait 
which is associated with OPEC2. So therefore, OPEC16 has been a boon to the breeder and where we have improved several of our hybrids using both OPEC2 and OPEC16 with no enhancement of kernel softness. We have also worked on another trait called uh, carotenoids, and we know that the different colors are present in maize ears, starting from white to light yellow to deep orange to the reddish tinge. But when we profile these maize hybrid maize inbreds for our carotenoids, we found that only 3% of the total carotenoid is beta carotene, while 81% of the total carotenoid is beta carotene among the semi harvest plus line. And the reason for this higher accumulation of beta carotene, there are basically two genes which were reported in 2008 in science and 2010 in nature genetics. And these genes are CRTRB1, which doesn't convert a, a synthesis of beta carotene into further component, while the LCY converts the pool of the flux from the alpha branch to the beta branch. Using these genes, we first integrate CRTRB1 in a normal hybrid called BDA hybrid 27, where we found that by just by integration, the level of vitamin A was increased to almost 5.5 ppm after three to four months of storage as compared to the one compared to one ppm in the original hybrid. So this hybrid was released in the name of PUSA Vivek Hybrid 27 in probe through CVRC in 2020. Once we improved for the individual trait like QPM and pro-vitamin A, our next job is to combine QPM and pro-vitamin A. And using marker selection, we first came out with PUSA Vivek QPM9 in probe, which was released to CVRC in 2017. And this hybrid happens to be the world's first QPM plus pro combination. It is the first multinutrient rich maize hybrids developed elsewhere in the world. And it has got obviously the high level of vitamin A, almost 8 ppm, and higher level of lysine and tryptophan. Then we have series of hybrids. In, during 2020 to CVRC, we have released two more hybrids, PUSA HQPM7 improved and PUSA HQPM5 improved. Both are medium maturing hybrid. And the most important is PUSA HQPM5 is adapted throughout the country. In maize, there are five agroclimatic zones, and this hybrid is adapted throughout the zone. So this is IRI first panning hybrid, which is biofortified, rich in vitamin A, lysine, and tryptophan. Very recently in 2021, we had again releases, two releases, PUSA HQPM1 improved, which is again a QPM plus pro rich hybrid and adapted again throughout the country. Well, another was PUSA Biofortified Maze Hybrid 1. It was released for Northern Hill Zone and Northeastern Plain Zone. Both these hybrids have got higher level of vitamin A, lysine, and tryptophan. With the release of pro-vitamin hybrid, IRS has found its place in the global map. Its particular review was, was published from CIMIT, where it is found that we, in 2017, became the first country in Asia to come out with pro rich hybrids, while China released its first hybrid in 2019. We have given our pro rich hybrids to National Institute of Nutrition at Hyderabad, where it was found that this, our pro rich hybrids provides 52 to 64 percent of the recommendatory dietary allowance of pro-vitamin A for the human need. That means it is not only rich in uh, pro-vitamin A in the brains, it also provides sufficient level of pro-vitamin A in the, uh, in, the, in the human body when the brains are consumed. We all know around 60% of the maize brains are used as a poultry feed. So we provided this QPM plus pro rich maize developed by IRI, the director of the poultry research at Hyderabad, and under the collaboration it was found that a breed called Vanaraja, which is one of the very popular breed because it's a backyard poultry breed, it was found that the QPM plus pro rich hybrid has got the higher body weight gain and the better feed conversion ratio. Better feed conversion ratio means it requires less amount of feed to attain the same level of body weight gain. So it is economically much more profitable. So this QPM plus pro hybrid is much better than the normal maize as well as the normal even QPM maize. So these are the very, very important leads uh, coming out of our study. The international study also shows that the colors present, that is the carotenoids present in the grains uh, are accumulated in egg yolk. And if you look at the figures, around 3 ppm is accumulated in egg yolk as compared to 0.3 ppm in the left side uh, egg yolk. Therefore, there is a 10 time increase of pro vitamin A in the egg yolk. So, therefore, it can also serve as an indirect vehicle for addressing nutrition, especially among the non vegetarians. And another aspect is these pigments are accumulated on the skin of the chicken, which is preferred in the international market as far as the export of meat is concerned. Another important aspect is pro-vitamin A rich maize 
has got lesser accumulation of aflatoxin. We all know aflatoxin is a very, very toxic to human body and it is accumulated because of the infestation by aspergillus flowers during the storage, specifically with higher humidity. But this proerythmase uh, leads to lesser accumulation of aflatoxin, which is again a great advantage, especially in the countries where humidity is a major problem. We have also started working on vitamin E. Vitamin E, we all know, is an important vitamin, especially among the old age people where neurological function and the cardiovascular functions are, are regulated by vitamin E. Though these grains are very rich in tocopherol, but the alpha tocopherol, which has got the highest absorption in the human body, is only 10% of the alpha of the total tocopherol. So we have identified a gene called VT4. And this VT4 gene converts gamma tocopherol into alpha tocopherol by almost threefold. So, using this gene, we introduce this VT4 into already available QTM and pro background. So, we have now pyramidal uh, line, pyramidal hybrids with uh, four genes OPEC2, CRTRB1, LCY, and VT, VT4. And if you look at the graph, it shows that the brown, the, the, the red graph, red diagram is the original hybrid, and the orange one are the improved one. The accumulation of alpha tocopherol in the red, rather the original one is almost like 8 ppm, while in the orange one, or the improved one, it's almost like 16 ppm. So that is almost two-fold increase in alpha tocopherol just by introducing this VT14. So this hybrid is a multinutrient-rich hybrid, which is rich in lysine, tryptophan, vitamin A, and vitamin E. And it is first of its kind uh, uh, hybrid has been developed with all the traits uh, together. We have published this recently in 2021. We all know that iron and zinc are also important minerals, but the problem is that only 5% of the iron is, uh, is uh, bioavailable in the human body, while the 20% of the iron of the zinc is bioavailable in the human body because of the 90% of phytic acid present in the maize grain. So reduction of the phytic acid is one of the avenues to increase the bioavailability of iron and zinc. There are various mutants available in maize, LPA1, LPA2, and LPA3. So we use this mutant and improve nine different hybrids. Uh, four are in, five are in the QPM genetic background and four are in the QPM plus progenetic background. And these hybrids are having 30 to 40% less phytic acid as compared to the normal maize. We all know that reduction of phytic acid to a great extent will reduce the standability or the adaptability of the plants under various conditions, specifically to the disease uh, infestation. But these lines, or that these hybrids do not have any agronomic problem because the reduction is only 30 to 40 percent, not beyond 50 to 60 percent. All these nine hybrids which we have developed at IRI under this program, it was tested in AICRP and was finally released. But if you look at the data, the field potential of the original as well as these biofortified hybrids, they are at par with each other. So therefore, there is no yield penalty. So as long as there is no yield penalty, the farmers will be very happy to adopt this and it can be uh, put into the common channel of, of cultivation of maize as, as we do it for the normal maize. Overall in India, so far 10 hybrids have been developed using molecular breeding. We all know in 2008, Vivek QPM9 uh, became the first mass derived hybrids which was released from PPKS Almora. But later on in 2017, IRI released four hybrids which are QPM or QPM plus proto-rich and in 2020, IRA released three more hybrids, which are rich in pro-vitamin A along with QPM. And very recently in 2021, we have released uh, two more hybrids, which are rich in QPM plus pro So out of 10 hybrids available in India, as far as the release and commercialization is concerned, nine hybrids have come from IRA. And with this, IRA has become the leading institute as far as the molecular breeding of these in India is concerned. Regarding the specialty traits, we all know that sweet corn has become a very famous uh, commodity. Whenever we go to malls or cinema halls or elsewhere, there are various options available for sweet corn. Uh, this is the starch biosynthesis pathway, which is very, very conserved across crops, including maize. There are two major genes. We call it a trunk and two, which works in the upstream of the pathway, while the sugary one, which works in the downstream of the pathway. Both the genes contribute to the development of sweet corn. Using this gene, we have developed several lines and using this line, in 2018, we have released Puxa Super Sweet Corn 1, a shrunken two-based sweet corn hybrid with, through CVRC, and it has got very high degree of sweetness, we call it bricks, and has got very high potential. In 2020, we had another release through CVRC, we call it Puxa Super Sweet Corn 2. 
It is again a shrunken tube with hybrid with higher sweetness and higher yield potential. Now, we have also found that pigmentation in plants, that is the purple pigmentation or the anthocyanin pigmentation, especially in the base of the seedlings or even in the roots, stems, silk color, or the tussle color, is associated with the dominant allele of shrunken tube. While the recessive allele, which gives the sweetness, is, as, is associated with no color or the green color. So therefore, we could find in a segregating population when there is no color in the plant, it, it should carry the recessive trunk into gene and the beta should select those plants. So for those who have not got the, any facility for molecular breeding, this phenotypic marker will serve as a very important tool for selection of sweet corn. However, this is a very valid te technology when sweet corn genotype is used as a donor parent. While the, when the sweet corn parents are used as a recipient parent, the first color is a dominant parent, it doesn't work. So with this, we, we identified very closely linked SSR markers for both sugary and trunk in two genes, which was less than two centimorgan. And these two, these markers are widely used in sweet corn breeding program elsewhere in India, as well as abroad. However, this link marker has its own problem. If there is crossing over, then that it will lead to a selection of the false positive. So our next mandate was to develop a gene-based marker for sugary one and trunk and two. By scanning the gene, entire gene sequence, by comparing the dominant and the recessive types, we could develop a tinkle marker for sugary one and an SNP-based PCR marker for the trunk and two. By using these two markers, we have now combined both the genes and we have now converted a six to line into a double nucleotide line, which has got four to five percent more sugar as compared to the sugary one one or that one. We have also have fortified our sweet corn hybrids. We have recently developed the introducing OPEC2 and the CRTRB1 gene. And if you can find our hybrids are, are having five-fold more increase in pro-vitamin A and almost two-fold increase in lysine and tryptophan. This is again a world's first example where uh, sweet corn hybrids have been improved for multinutrient. Here it is pro-vitamin A, lysine, and tryptophan. Sweet corn is generally harvested at a period of 20 days after pollination. We call it as DFP in short, and it can be harvested till the time of 28 days because the kernel should be soft enough for usage of sweet corn. So at various stages of 20, 24, and 28 days, we studied the accumulation of uh, vitamin A, lysine, and tryptophan along with the bricks. And it was found that 20 days, highest accumulation is achieved for vitamin A, lysine, and tryptophan, although the bricks is attained at the highest level at 24 days. Considering everything we propose, 20 days is the right stage of harvest for this fortified sweet corn. We have, we have validated uh, this, uh, this accumulation with the expression of the CRTRB1 and OPEC2 gene at all these stages. And it was found that the lower expression of CRTRB1 and OPEC2 leads to higher accumulation of lysine and tryptophan as far as the regulation is concerned. In 2020-21, we came out with the first male sterile baby corn hybrid. We call it as Utsa ATM4 male sterile baby corn, and in a short, we call it as Shishu. Now, all the hybrids are male fertile. Uh, being male fertile, the major problem is we need to have the beta saline, which involves a lot of liver. While our hybrid, which is male fertile, the right side photograph, there is no anthony exertion, therefore, there is no requirement of levers for. Uh, manual detesting. By this, we can save almost 8,000 to 12,000 rupees per hectare. Another important thing is when the baby corn is harvested, the rest plant part goes as a fodder. In a fertile plant, since the honeydew is busy for honey, so the honeydew falls on the leaves and that invites the infestation by fungus and therefore reduces the fodder quality. Here, in case of male sterile baby corn, the fodder is very clean, having excellent quality, and therefore the cattle will Cattle have the best quality order of the harvest of baby corn. We all know in maize, Sikkim Primitive is the most uh, coveted maize land races in India because of it can it can possess almost seven to nine years per plant at a pace in Sikkim. But in Delhi, it can produce almost five years per plant. The left side photograph clearly shows there are five years per plant as compared to the one year per plant in a normal line. For the first time, we used uh, uh, we developed a mapping population and identified major QTL. We called it as QPROL SP80.5, and it has got almost 30% contribution. 
So therefore, we are now introducing this QPL, and we are also trying to identify the gene candidate gene responsible uh, for this prolific case. And this is again the first report in India where a maize land race has been used for identification of the locus is responsible for a special trait present in land races. We are also working in pre breeding uh, And in this case, we have used Pyosinte as a, as a wild relative, and we have introduced TB1 gene into maize to increase the prolificacy. Our DDGSR has been very, very instrumental in using this pre-breeding approach for improvement of the, uh, of the plants. And here we have introduced the TB1 gene from Pyosinte, and the line shows there is a clear increase of prolificacy in maize just because of the in, uh, introduction, introduction of TB1 allele from Geosynthet. We are also working for sticky maize, which is very special for not, at Northeast. Now, all the Northeast maize land races are sticky because they are having high amylopectin. Normal maize are having 70% amylopectin, while because of the introduction of the YC1 gene, the, uh, the, the amylopectin can go up to almost 95 to 100%. And because of this higher amylopectin, the, the maize candles become sticky. So to, to, to address the, their need, we have developed several of waxy inbreds at IRI. And using this as a donor, we have now improved four hybrids, which is otherwise in, increased, uh, having increased level of lysine and tryptophan with high amylopectin. Now, if you can see the deep blue bar indicates the original hybrid, where all around 72% amylopectin is there, while 98% has been achieved in the reconstituted hybrids. Now, this hybrid will play a very important role for increasing productivity as well as providing sufficient food to the Northeast states where it is their preference as a food. And I'd also like to mention this, uh, this Vaximase is also very, very important for biofuel because it has got higher in output of biofuel. It is increasingly used by the bodybuilders after, after their exercise, the muscle glycogen depletes and they take this amylopectin powder with water and drink it. It has got a tremendous uh, industrial application. So these uh, waxicon hybrids, again, first of its kind developed in India, and we are ready to enter these hybrids in AICRP trial. We are also working to lower the glycemic index of maize. We all take uh, uh, Kellogg's cornflakes in the breakfast, including, uh, including various other aspects. In the GI, uh, the glycemic index of maize is very high, it is 81. And so therefore, the diabetes cannot take such as uh, maize, maize food. So to reduce glycemic index, we all know we have to increase amylose. In normal maize, we have 30% amylose, but here in this particular lines, we have increased to a level of 60 to 70% by progressing amylose extender line. And these are the first set of inputs which we developed at IRI, which has got at the higher amylose level, almost more than 50%. And our uh, parental lines of hybrids are ready. In the next, next uh, year, we'll be testing hybrids uh, with, uh, with high amylose and low GI maize. We are also ready with two popcorn hybrids. These are in the AVT2 final year of testing at ASRP uh, trials. Uh, we would also like to accelerate the breeding program, uh, uh, not by just molecular breeding, but also through double applied technology. We all know that in maize, we use in vivo double applied technology to using maternal haploids. And this haploid was, uh, haploid inducer line was developed way back in 1959. And very recently, CIMAT has come out with tropically adapted haploid inducer line. But to develop our own inducer line, which is more adapted to Indian condition, as well as Delhi and surrounding condition, we introduced two genes, MPL and BMP, which we have, which have been identified to be responsible for haploid induction from a temperate line. And by developing markers, we are now ready with our own haploid inducer lines. And this is again a first of its kind report where we are ready with haploid inducer line. We call it as locally adapted haploid inducer line. And they do also have similar haploid induction capacity, almost average of eight to 10% with a range of 16 to 14%. If you look at the photograph, the embryo with no color uh, is a haploid seed, but embryo with color are the diploid seeds. As far as the popularization of technologies are concerned, now we have received a breeder seed in them in 2021, five of our hybrids, and uh, at Trinidad, at squashed uh, uh, Trinidad, this Pusa Vivek UPM9 has proved to be an excellent hybrid because of its maturity and high yield potential. So we have signed MOU with them, and they have very recently taken hybrid seed production at one of their AVKs in Kukwara in Jammu and Kashmir. So breeder seed production at IRI, 
and we are also doing the breeder seed or TLC production in farmers' field in various uh, places, including West Bengal. Best of our hybrids have been tested in farmers' field. It is at Eterna. We know Eterna is a very famous village for sweet corn. This farmer, Mr. Kamal Pal Singh Chauhan, is a Padma Shri for his work on uh, sweet corn. So in their village, we have tested the sweet corn. Even in Meghalaya also, we have tested our uh, sweet corn hybrids, which has done excellently well. And the DBD Kisan project, which has been recently sanctioned, these bioforactified hybrids are being popularized through various training programs in various places in Nagaland, Tripura, and other, other states. So altogether, in this year, 18 different states are, are having this demonstration of these biofortified uh, hybrids uh, for uh, food and various other purposes. These hybrids have also found places, and one of the 20 best technologies uh, recently developed at IRI, where this biofortification has biofortified means have, have been featured in these IRI technologies. Through ICR uh, bulletins as well, this biofortification uh, program or bio development of biofortified means have been, uh, have been cited in these uh, in this bulletins. Uh, these informations of this biofortification have also been cited in different social media platforms of Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and Government of India. And in 2018, uh, Indian experts have, have covered this story where they mentioned that IRI breeds nutrient rich hybrid maize, uh, thanks to Dr. Rekha Singh, our honorable director, uh, for, uh, for this uh, coverage of this uh, story. Very recently, in 2021, uh, this uh, the story of biofortification has also been covered by India Science, a digital channel where uh, Pallab Bagla, one of the renowned uh, science journalists, have covered a 30 minute program on biofortification. And I again thank uh, our honorable director uh, for, for, uh, for providing us this opportunity uh, for this coverage. Various administrators, policymakers, and scientists have visited our field and appreciated and understood the various aspects of promoting biofortified maize uh, in the market. As far as the development of teaching tool is concerned, I'm associated with teaching in elements of genetics uh, uh, at, from way back in 2006. I also teach various other courses. And very recently we have taught Afghan students. And I also teach the school teachers uh, who teach genetics uh, to the school, school, school children. So there is a Congress, Genetics Congress Trust in collaboration with them we have a training program where we train school teachers. Because the major problem is many aspects, school teachers are also not very clear how to put them in front of the students so, so that they can understand. By working with them, we could understand that teaching genetics in classroom is altogether a different issue, a different aspect as compared to teaching with chemistry or biology, where we have a 3D model of the solar system in, in, in case of geography, or I would say for the heart water. But as far as the genetics is concerned, we will always draw a tall plant, short plant, and make a cross, and we'll show trees to one. Considering this difficulty, we looked into our, our, our germplasm and found that we are already working with various mutants. Using those, we have developed 21 different genetic stocks, which is responsible, or by which we can show various aspects of genetics. Here we can show very clearly trees to one segregation. Similarly, here we can show gametic segregation of one is to one. So these are the pollens. Maxi pollen shows red color. The wild type pollen shows the blue color. The heterozygote showed one is to one segregation, segregation of red and blue color. These are the transposable genetic elements. We have a lot of stocks on that. Various school children, the last three, four years, they, in patches, they have visited our field having the biofortified uh, maize there, and which basically helped them in sensitizing the nutrition aspect of it. Collaboration. And, and human and, uh, and sharing germplasm, a very important aspect. IRI being a national institute uh, uh, as a mandate to share the germplasm, all the SAUs and other ICR institutes have shared many of our valuable germplasm, which in pro vitamin and QPM with the various institute to spend on that training program. Uh, I have trained several of my students, training postdocs and international students. Altogether, 38 students and scientists and researchers have been trained in the field of maize molecular breeding in our lab. We also trained uh, 25 scientists uh, through HRM training on molecular breeding that the molecular breeding on maize was covered as one of the subjects. As far as my publication is concerned, I have one publication in maize uh, with an eight index of 29 and I10 index of 75. And these are, uh, the, bag these are the bar diagram where uh, the number of uh, articles published uh, in, through different years have been 
mention. A very important aspect is citing publication in maize genetic database is a very important aspect. They basically look for novel information and we could find 16 of our publication having novel information have been cited by the maize GDP. So that's a very important uh, uh, aspect what we could find. I'm involved as a PI of the 11 externally funded projects supported by ICR, EBT, and GST of 945 lakhs. Uh, so with the summary, uh, I can say that uh, with this program, we have developed nine, nine biofortified maize hybrids through CVRC, three specialty corn hybrids through CVRC, 126 research publications from maize, uh, handle 11 externally funded projects as principal investigator, guided five MSc and five PhD students, and developed 21 genetic stocks as a tool for teaching genetics. And this has been the most proud moment for us where honorable, our honorable prime minister uh, dedicated three of our maize uh, bio hybrids, which are either bio fortified or bio sterile hybrids, along with the 35 varieties of special trade developed by ICR on 28th of September, 2021. So with this, I'd like to acknowledge my council, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, I'd like to thank uh, DDG Crops, Dr. Pia Sharma, and all the predecessors for their tremendous help and support. I'd like to thank all the directors of IRI and, it, and place on record my sincere thank the present director, Dr. Rikhe Singh, for his continuous uh, support, guidance, and inspiration, and besides being instrumental in popularizing uh, IRI knowledge. Thanks to Joint Director of Research, Dean, Joint Director of Education. I'd also like to thank the head of genetics, Dr. Rajviri Adam and all the predecessors for providing the facilities and, and the support. Thanks are also due to Professor Genetics and his head seat science and technology. I take this opportunity to thank uh, all the directors of IMR and AICRP and various centers for their help and support. Thanks are also due to Summit Target Plus, USDA, MGCSC, and GAS for providing the donor lines. I thank ICRCRP, NHGP, DBT, DSP for funding. I sincerely thank uh, Dr. B.M. Prasanna, uh, my guide for the doctoral program, teaching me the ABCD of maize and continuously providing support as a director for the Global Maze Program from CIMIT by providing value examples. I sincerely also thank Dr. Prasis Gupta, sir. He has a capacity of both coordinator of the PPT project and as, as well, the director of this institute provided dimension to our breeding program, which led to the development of several biofortified maize hybrid. I sincerely thank Dr. Este Vassal, the World Food Laureate and a pioneer of quality protein maize for his valuable suggestions. I thank my teacher, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra sir and A.K. Singh sir for teaching two very important courses, eukaryotic molecular genetics and innovative approaches to plant breeding. These two courses have been very helpful for execution of these molecular breeding techniques in developing these biofortified hybrids. So I thank both my teachers. Thank you very much. I'd also sincerely thank Dr. Kevin Prabhu for providing the leadership role, both as a capacity of head and joint director of research, for providing all the support. I'd also like to thank Dr. D.K. Adhava for providing continuous guidance for upskilling seeds production of these biofortified hybrids. I thank two of my colleagues, Dr. Vignesh and Dr. Rajkumar, the pillar of the programs, for continuously supporting uh, uh, and, and helping in every possible way. I thank all my collaborators, Dr. Sudhir Prabhasu, Dr. Supratit Saha, Dr. K. Munjaya, Dr. Ashwini Kumar, Dr. Jan Butt, Dr. Robin Gogoi, Dr. Radha Prasanna, Dr. Sunil Keja. Uh, unfortunately, Sari is not with, uh, Sari is no more with us. Dr. Shantosh Kumar, Dr. Shatish Guleria from Jora, Dr. Uh, MC Kamboj, Dr. Raghu, and Dr. Dr. Prakash. I thank FOSU and IRA administration for their uh, all around support and uh, and, and providing all the facilities. I thank the maze team, technical staff, students, and research fellows. At, at the end, not at least, I thank my family members for providing continuous support and encouragement during the period. With this, I thank each one of you for your patient hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for presentation of exemplary research work and uh, Hearty congratulations once again for well-deserving Dr. B.P. Paul medal. Now it's the time to further decorate this presentation with the expert uh, remarks. I request the esteemed chair for the same.
सर अनम्यूट करें प्लीज प्रोफेसर गुप्ता अनम्यूट कर लें सर यस इट वाज एन एक्सेलेंट लेक्चर गिवन बाय फिरोज हुसैन एंड आई एंजॉयड लिसनिंग टू द लेक्चर एंड आल्सो लर्निंग बिकॉज I did not know so much about the maize maize crop because I have been working on on wheat crop throughout the year, and this lecture reminded me of the time when we developed SSR markers for the first time in wheat during 1950s, and Dr. B M Prasanna visited our lab with a couple of students to see what we we were doing at that particular time. But the kind of wide range of areas which has been covered in this lecture if i start talking about every one of them this will be repetitive but the most important point which i would like to highlight is that the work done by firoz husain particularly in the area of molecular breeding is an example of successful use of molecular markers for plant breeding because in not many crops we have been able to develop so many uh, varieties through marker assisted selection particularly in case of wheat i know we have not been successful in producing any variety perhaps we have been trying to do mass we have improved pre breeding material but we have not been able to to produce a particular variety through marker assisted selection and the kind of markers which firoz hussain has developed including gene based markers closely linked markers you see in qtl analysis we have develop thousands of qtls and markers in case of wheat for example but majority of these markers are not robust enough to be used in marker assisted selection but in case of the work done by firoz hussain they have developed the markers which really proved useful in in actual plant breeding and therefore not only for india but for the entire world this is an example of a very very successful use of molecular markers in plant breeding programs and therefore for students also i feel that these his work can be always cited and as example of successful use of molecular breeding among the characters not only you see in biofortification also we often talk of iron and zinc particularly in wheat we always talk of iron and zinc and phytate but the kind of traits which have been used by firoz hussain including lysine tryptophan probiotin pro vitamin a and vitamin all these traits including uh, other specialty traits so wide range of traits you talk of any area of maize breeding molecular markers have been used by firoz hussain very successfully during the last 15 years of his career i think he is young enough to continue for another 15 20 years the useful work and keep on guiding his students and the direction give direction to the maize breeding program not only in india but uh, throughout throughout the country and elsewhere i i i don't think any other even maize project directorate uh, might have not produced so many varieties through molecular breeding as firoz hussain has done and he has brought iiri on world map uh, through his through his exemplary work as i told you but some of the areas for example you see some of the work which we are doing in wheat include for example meta qtl analysis a large number of qtls must be available in case of maize but they have not been subjected to any meta qtl analysis this is what i would suggest that meta qtl analysis may be conducted utilizing the qtls which have already been reported i am sure thousands of qtls must be available and another area is we developed a wheat qtl uh, database which uh, is being used throughout the world now and a similar database if not available in maize they should be developed in case of maize also maize qtl database and of course i think these are the two areas which i thought meta qtl analysis and development of databases which uh, firoz hussain can consider uh, for the rest of his career which will be an important contribution for the users of wheat wheat genetics uh, and maize maize genetics and maize breeding with this brief word as i told you i would not like to repeat everything he has talked about but it was an excellent presentation i enjoyed 
hearing about it and I would like to actually see this presentation and go through it again to learn, learn more about it because it is always uh, excitement for me. My, I always like to learn and therefore this presentation will be another source of learning maze, maze breeding for me. Thank you very much Firoz Hussain for excellent lecture and, and I wish you good luck for your future career. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Ashok, for giving me this opportunity to participate. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It's indeed our pleasure and we are privileged to have your blessings uh, whenever we are in need. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, valuable remarks and uh, the guidance uh, you provided us through your remarks. I now request uh, our Dean and Joint Director of Education for a formal vote of thanks. Thank you, Rolf. And uh, it's uh, my uh, pleasure and privilege to propose a formal vote of thanks. And uh, we are so grateful to uh, Dr. P.K. Gupta, uh, who chaired this session and uh, enlightened us and uh, gave a lot of ideas also to Dr. Firuz Hussain and others to take lead in the areas where they are working on. Sir, we are very, very grateful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation, gracing the occasion, and doing the job which has been assigned to you, sir. So much thankful to you, sir. I'm also thankful to uh, Dr. T.R. Sharma, and, uh, Deputy Director of Crop Sciences, who joined and who also, by his presence, uh, motivated all of us. Uh, I'm thankful to Dr. Uh, Director Dr. A.K. Singh, all the faculty members, uh, heads, professors, students who joined this program and listened to Dr. Firoz Hussain's excellent presentation. So it's a really a, a treat for all those uh, people who are very actively pursuing their research work, how meticulously and uh, systematically he has moved in the uh, improvement of uh, maize crop. And uh, my thanks are also to Rolf, very nicely conducting the whole session. Uh, with these words, uh, once again, my heartiest congratulations to Dr. Firoz Hussain for getting this uh, prestigious 18th uh, BP Paul medal and all others who joined in great number. Thank you, each one of you. Okay, thank, thank you very much. All. Thank, you. thank you all. We will join at 3.45 uh, for the next hour lecture. Uh, Raul, let's, uh, let's check if uh, Daksha is already here. So, okay, uh, uh, Dr. Sarma, I will check if Dr. Yadav is there. Can we uh, start because we already, we have 500 participants, which is yes. uh, quite a good number. And, yeah, we, can, uh, we can start, we can start, it's up to you. Dr. Yadav, are you there? Because we had given, of course, time to him. Maybe he is... Oh, uh, sir, I'm there, I'm there. Sir. So you are there, okay, great. So I think we can we can continue rather than having 15 minutes uh, uh, break. Uh, so the same tempo is uh, maintained, right? Yes. So Dr. Rasni, we'll go ahead. Okay, sir. Yes, we'll proceed, sir. Yeah. We'll continue. Prof, you can... Take up. Esteemed chairperson of this session, Dr. T.R. Sharma, Deputy Director General, Crop Science ICR, Honorable Director and Vice Chancellor IARI, Dr. A.K. Singh, Dean and Joint Director Education IRI, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, other distinguished guests present here, the students, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to this. A.B. Joshi Memorial Award Lecture. Dr. A.B. Joshi Memorial Award was instituted in the field of agriculture research and education to commemorate the memory of late Dr. A.B. Joshi, the first Indian Dean of IRI, Director and Deputy Director General, Crop Sciences, ICR. To spread the divine grace, I request the esteemed chair and other dignitaries for lighting up lamp. Kalyanam, Arukyam, Ganasam, Bada, Shubham, Purutvam, Kalyanam, Arukyam, Ganasam, Bada, Shatru, Buddhi, Vinashaya, Deepa, Jyoti, Namo, Sudhi, Deepa, Jyoti, Namo, Sudhi. I request uh, the chairperson and the dignitaries for paying floral tribute to late Dr. A.B. Joshi.
May I now request uh, Dean and Joint Director of Education IRI, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, for formal welcome address. Good afternoon, each one of you. Uh, chairman of uh, today's uh, this award lecture, sixth uh, A.B. Joshi Memorial Award Lecture, Dr. T.R. Sharma, Deputy Director General Crop Sciences. Speaker of this sixth A.B. Joshi Memorial Award Lecture, Dr. D.K. Yadava, ADG Seeds, ICR New Delhi. Dr. Ashok Kumar Singh, our Director, IRI. Joint Directors, Project Director, Heads of the Division, Professors, Faculty, Students, Ladies and Gentlemen. I extend a very warm welcome to each one of you on this sixth A.B. Joshi Memorial Award Lecture. I also um, would like to welcome Dr. Pushpendra Gupta ji also, sir. We are very happy that you, uh, you will be listening to this uh, lecture also, sir. Uh, my uh, uh, warm welcome, first of all, to Dr. Tia Sharma, uh, DDG Crop Science, a well-known nationally and internationally well-known rice biotechnologist. So we are very delighted that you are here today with us, chairing this particular session. I warmly welcome Dr. D.K. Yadwa and my congratulations to Dr. Yadwa for getting this prestigious sixth A.B. Joshi Memorial Award. I would like to welcome all others on this uh, occasion and a good number is there, roughly 500. So before we uh, proceed further, I would like to briefly tell about this award. Dr. A.B. Joshi Memorial Award has been instituted in the field of agricultural research and education to commemorate the memory of late Dr. A.B. Joshi, the first Indian Dean of IRI, coordinator of the All India Coordinated Wheat Program Director of IRI and DDG Crop Sciences ICR. So these were the positions which were held by him. This biannually award carries a cash prize of rupees one lakh and a medal and a citation. This award is to be given to Indian nationals for their outstanding contributions in the field of agricultural research and education. The award shall be made for notable and original research, both fundamental and applied and leading to results of practical value and social impact in India and their significant contributions to the advancement of agricultural edu education. So with this uh, brief uh, uh, about the award, I once again welcome each one of you on this last session of award lecture series to be held today for sixth AB uh, Joshi Memorial Award. So over to Dr. Rao. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I now request our honorable director to kindly do the honor of introducing chairperson of this session to the August together. Sir, you are muted, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, so very good afternoon. I would like to extend a warm welcome to Dr. T.R. Sharma, Deputy Director General of Craft Science and Chairman of uh, Dr. A.B. Joshi Memorial Award Lecture. And also to Dr. D.K. Adwa, who is the awardee for this very prestigious award. Uh, I would also welcome Professor P.K. Gupta, who is uh, with us uh, and who just uh, chaired the session before. Uh, it's my proud uh, privilege and pleasure to introduce the chairperson of the uh, session today, Dr. T. R. Sarma, who did his PhD from uh, Himachal Pradesh Agriculture University, Palampur, and then uh, his postdoctoral fellowship from uh, University of uh, Alberta in Canada, and uh, intensive training at Cold Spring Harbor in USA. Uh, Dr. Sarma worked as assistant professor at the Biotechnology Center in Himachal Pradesh, Krishi Dale. And uh, then he joined as senior scientist uh, at National Research Center on Plant Biotechnology, uh, which became a, uh, in true sense, you know, long state contribution. Uh, he became principal scientist there, he served, and then also became the direct project director of the NRCPB. And uh, there he was deeply associated with the rice genome sequencing project and uh, basic uh, and fundamental work in development of transgenics. Uh, he joined the uh, executive director, National Agri-Food Biotechnology Institute in Mohali and also served as CEO, uh, Center for Innovative and Applied Bioprocessing uh, at uh, Mohali. 
Uh, at Navi, he brought a uh, lot of uh, changes and uh, innovations in uh, bringing the public-private partnership and upscaling the uh, technology in form of translational research. Uh, his contribution uh, is uh, very, very extensive in improvement of rice for over 16 years. And the most significant uh, contributions includes mapping, cloning, functional validation of rice blast gene, uh, particularly PIKH, which is now named as PI54. And uh, this gene has been deployed in breeding program and a large number of varieties, dozen of varieties have been developed uh, deploying this gene in breeding program. In fact, Dr. Sarma is associated with the development of two varieties uh, with us in Basmati. One is Usa Basmati 1637, another is uh, Usa Samba 1850, which uh, deploys uh, this gene along with other blast resistant genes. Uh, he also characterized the genetic variability in different plant pathogen like Alpinaria, uh, different species then uh, uh, also uh, collected, uh, these species were collected from diverse uh, regions of the world using molecular markers for the first time the characterization was undertaken. Uh, he joined as uh, DDG Crop Sciences in his uh, current position in January 2020 and since then, he is providing a dynamic leadership for innovative changes in research, testing, and varietal release uh, system in field crop. Uh, Dr. Sarma's work has been recognized by several awards, including prestigious DVT National Bioscience Award, Baswick Award, and uh, ICAR prestigious Rafi Ahmad Kidwe Award. Uh, I mentioned you just before in the session that very few people have the honor of being the fellow of all the four science academy and Dr. P.K. Gupta is one of them. Dr. T.R. Sarma also has the honor of uh, being the fellow of uh, all the national science uh, academies, uh, FNA, FNAC, FAC, and uh, fellow of NAS, which is a rare honor, honor indeed uh, for any uh, scientist. Uh, I would like to welcome you, sir, warmly and uh, uh, look forward to your uh, continued support to the research program, to the institute, and uh, guiding the research program in the country as a whole, and uh, to listen to your uh, wisdom, words of wisdom on the uh, presentation that is going to be made by the Wadi, Dr. D.K. Adho. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I deem it privilege to request uh, the esteemed chair to kindly introduce the meritorious award of six Dr. A.B. Joshi Memorial Award. Thank you, Rolf. Uh, good afternoon to all. Distinguished director of IARI, Dr. A.K. Singh, our most respected teacher, Professor P.K. Gupta, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, Dean and Joint Director of Education, Distinguished head of the divisions, teachers, students, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Director IRI, Dr. A.K. Singh, for inviting me to be here this afternoon. I always love to come to IRI, being my own institute, We're spending more, more than 18 to 20 years and still staying within the same campus. And it's my always Proud privilege to attend all these lectures. I used to attend all the lectures during con IRI convocation, which is a great tradition which IRI has really started for the past many years. And all these lectures are always uh, of very, very high standards. We just now had a lecture from BP Paul Chair, Dr. Uh, uh, by Dr. Firoz. Uh, now, uh, the task given to me is to introduce my own colleague, Dr. Devendra Kumar Yadava, <coughs> who is with me as Assistant Director General at Indian Council of Agriculture Research, to whom I know for the past more than 20 years uh, when he joined IARI. And uh, I was also working there at an IPV. Um, earlier it was an RCPV where Dr. Yadava got training, extensive training on molecular breeding. So since then, I, I was knowing Dr. Yadva, but my extensive association and very intimate association was with him started when I joined here at Kishi Bhavan, New Delhi, two years back. And I found him one of the best and finest workers and very honest person 
as as we really rear quality which we have nowadays in many of the scientists. So uh, it's my proud privilege to introduce Dr. Devendra Kumar Yadva, who has done his bachelor's, master's, and PhD from Agriculture University, Hisar, one of the few universities, famous universities of agriculture universities in the country. And all through his career, he got uh, one or other fellowship like National Award, UNDP Fellowship, and also uh, ICAR Junior Research Fellowship. Then after working there from 1996 to 2003 as uh, assistant professor at Rajasthan Agriculture University, Bikaneer, Agriculture Research Station, Sri Ganganagar, Rajasthan, for more than seven, year, seven years, and then moved to Indian Council of Agriculture Research in the Division of Genetics as senior scientist in the program of Prasika breeding in 2003. There onwards, he served there as principal scientist, then head of the division, and, and also along with head of the division, he was taking care of assistant director general seats from 2017 onwards, where he is now occupying a regular position for the past one and a half years. So uh, Dr. Yadav has done extensive work in breeding, brassica breeding programs for more than 25 years including 19 years at Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi, and later on joined as head of the division Seed Science and Technology, IRI, New Delhi. As far as his contribution in varietal improvement is concerned, he has developed and released more than 21 varieties, which includes 18 of mustard and three of pulses. And the most significant varieties which are now recognized and associated with Dr. Yadava's contribution is uh, are early maturing and high yielding mustard varieties, Pusa mustard 25, PM 27, PM 28, PM 26, and RGN 145. And these varieties are now grown in different parts of the country. He was associated in development of climate resilient varieties like Pusa Vise, which is heat tolerant, RGN 48, drought tolerant, RGN 13, forest tolerant, frost tolerant, RGN 73, wider adaptability, and these varieties are very well, doing very well in the country. The most significant achievement, which I consider as a scientist or as a breeder is, for which he has done is the developing development of first double zero canola quality variety as PUSA double zero mustard 31 during uh, 2015. And he has also developed six low erucic acid mustard varieties, Usa mustard 21, 22, 24, 29, and like that. So many varieties he has developed. Dr. Yadav is one of the best teachers at IRI. He has guided uh, five PhD students and presently guiding 24 PhD students uh, in the division of genetics at IRI today. Uh, as far as his contribution and uh, as ADG seed is concerned, I think uh, the whole seed program in the ICR system and in the country has got a flip and remarkable change when once he took over as ADG seeds and which shows the, the seminal contribution is the strict monitoring and coordination brought down the varietal mismatches from 34.7% from 2015-16 to 16% during 2021, which is one of the most difficult tasks in a country like India, where uh, we have a lot of varietal mismatch in the country. Dr. Yadav is a very well-decorated scientist. And before this award, he has been recipient of the prestigious ICR Rafi Ahmed Kidway Award, Dr. Rajendra Prasad Award for Best Technical Book in Hindi, then BP Pal Memorial Award in 2012 before Piroz Hussain. He has also been a recipient of this award, then uh, NAS Recognition Award, and many, many awards which are in his credit. And the most important thing which I would like to cite here that he is the fellow of National Academy of Agricultural Sciences for which all agricultural scientists wants to aspire. And his contribution to uh, Brassica science, we will now just listen to him after uh, when he delivered the talk on as a prestigious A.V. Joshi Memorial Award 
today, this evening. So with these words now, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Yadva for his lecture, uh, this award lecture. Dr. Yadva, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your very nice words, sir. Am I audible, sir? No, no, we can't see your slides. Okay. <clears throat> we can see only blank screen. I think it's a heavy file and that's taking time to Maybe. load. Is it open on the desktop? <laughs> Connectivity issue. Dr. Yadav, you he unshare and then reshare it. face is also like, like now he is. I'm trying. It is hanging. <laughs> oh, might be big slice. Ah, but I tried online uh, before uh, this. It was working well. Just it is. Uh, I, I will be okay. Check it. Check it. So is it okay, sir? Now? Not yet. Okay. We cannot see. Uh, now it is fine. It's now okay. It is fine. It's fine. Okay, sir. Yes, I think because of heavy I think file, it was getting problem. So good afternoon to all, and uh, thanks to the chairman, sir, for his very kind words. And uh, really, during last two years, we enjoyed uh, with him as our research manager and uh, host. So, uh, Sir, Honorable Chairman Sir, Dr. T.R. Sharmaji, our Deputy Director General Group of Sciences, Dr. P.K. Gupta Sir, our Director IRI, Dr. A.K. Singh Ji, Dean, Madam Rashmi, Project Director, Joint Director Extension, all the professors and heads, faculty members and DS students. It's my proud privilege for being with you today and I am really very grateful to the Institute for the for conferring this award to me and uh, my special gratitude to the director sir and the PG school for giving me this opportunity. So I'll be presenting my work on the genetic improvement of Indian mustard for self-sufficiency. So first of all, before going to the presentation, I would like to pay my respectful tributes to Professor A.B. Joshi an instrumental researcher and teacher in the genetics and plant breeding, whose contributions made it possible to assert the green revolution. So my uh, warm greeting, uh, tributes to Honorable Professor A.B. Joshi. Sir, regarding the work, uh, as I have been associated with the Resica program for almost 25 years and dealt with some other crops also when uh, I was at uh, Sri Ganganagar, including system and Kester. <laughs> And uh, Repsid Mustard, it is, I, as Chairman Sabe told, it is almost 25 years now when I started my work in Resica program. So as we are well aware that in our country, we are growing nine edible, nine total oil seed crops out of which eight are edible. And the castor is one of the non-edible crops. As far as the status is concerned, so we uh, I'm presenting the data of 2019-20 as the final data was not there, for 2021 and some ambiguity was there. So amongst the, we, we have the two sources of uh, edible oil. The one is the primary oil seeds, which uh, uh, are these uh, uh, ripseed mustard, groundnut, soybean, sesame, sunflower, sunflower, azure, they fall under the primary. And uh, the production during 1920, as the edible oil that was 7.03 million tons. And for the secondary source, which includes the cotton seed oil, palm oil, corn oil, rice bran oil, coconut, and the other tree bone oils, and the production was 3.5 million tons. And if we see in terms of the contribution crop-wise, so mustard brassica 
Jenshia is contributing almost 30, more than 30 percent towards the total indigenous uh, edible oil pool. And the other uh, secondary sources, they are also contributing 33 percent. The soybean falls at number two with 16.83 percent and 16.2 percent, and the others all just in 3.4 percent. And as you all are well aware, that our total requirement is 25.63 million tons and we are almost uh, uh, dependent on 69% uh, up to from the other countries and we are spending more than 75,000 crores during this period but this time the total import uh, uh, that bill has gone I think more than 1 lakh crores. Regarding the consumption and why we are facing this much of difficulty if we see so this is our uh, this uh, technology mission, technology mission on well seed and pulse seed was initiated during 1985-86. At that time, our self-sufficiency was 72%. And as you see, the total uh, that uh, availability was 6.2 million tons. The, now the increased that uh, requirement is because of the, the population as well as the, at that time the per day um, that uh, consumption, capital consumption was also very low, which has now touched to 19.33 kg per capita per day per, per annum. So that is also one of the reasons. And uh, however, the uh, medical sciences, they say that it should be 13 kg per person per year. The consumption of edible oil should be there. So it is almost 30% uh, uh, higher which we are taking. So that is also one reason. And now the self-sufficiency is only 41% during 1920s. 20, but now during 2021, I think the situation has improved and during this season, again, the situation will be improving. As far as the mustard status globally is concerned, so our product productivity is, I think, much lower than the many of the other countries, even with Pakistan also, we have the lower productivity of almost 1.3 tons per hectare, whereas in many countries, it is up to 3.3 tons and in EU it is three tons, but rather in Germany it is almost 3.8 tons per hectare. So even we are lower than the world average and the reason, generally we are discussing that the, uh, the this crop we are growing under the marginal lands and real fed conditions. There are so many biotic and abiotic stresses which are leading to the uh, damage to this crop and the various growing situations are there. We are growing under late zone, under timely zone, under real fed situation, salinity conditions are also there. And the yield levels of the variety that also needs to be addressed as we see the world average and the various other countries. So that is also one issue, which is a essential issue. My journey, I did, as the chairman sir has very uh, elaborately told that I started my uh, BSc, MSc and PhD I did from HAISR and after serving for a brief period as postdoctorate fellow and for, for quite some time as technical officer also, I moved to Rajasthan Agriculture University in, to 1996, where I served up to March 2003, and from there I joined the division of genetics during 2003 April, and uh, then I was searching, searching, working there January 2021 when I moved permanently towards the council. And uh, during 2017 uh, February, I was given the additional charge of assistant director general by our honorable DG ICR. So I have just divided this presentation in uh, these uh, eight parts, mainly enhancement in the seed and oil yields, adaptation to the various cropping system, enhancing oil and seed build quality, minimizing losses due to diseases, enhancement in the enhancing breeding efficiency, human resource development, scaling up the technologies and policy intervention. Under the first part, as we all are well aware that the germ plant is the treasury is the main backbone of any breeding program. And in our, this mustard program at uh, Rajasthan, Ananagar also, where I served initially as assistant professor, as well as at the division of genetics also, we were having almost 800 accessions of the different Resica species, which include the maximum number of Resica gentia, which is almost 434 or so, and followed by the Resica carinata. Resica carinata variation we have with some of the Lines through some colonial variations. Our honorable DG, when he was at NRCPB, he developed. So now we have almost 140 some colonial variations, which are having a very diverse, a very high diversity for the plant height, maturity, seed size, seed color, flower color, and most of the traits. That is a very high diverse population, diverse uh, collection with us. 
and in other pro, other species also like brassica rapa brassica nepa brassica uh, this nigra uh, and uh, so we are having a good collection and we try we characterize that all collection uh, any at uh, multiple times and we have could identify some of the very good lines out of that which we are using in our breeding program so uh, this is these are some of the studies where we tried to make the core set and the those sets what they were used and the stability studies of the various lines germplasm uh, accessions they were also studied so based on that the parental lines were searched for making the different crosses in the recent studies under the nsf program we could uh, we had a set of germplasm which was consisting of the various uh, this resynthesized lines from pa banana from our self some of the short duration line quality lines and some of the exotic lines which we tried to have the correlation between the yield and the various yield related uh, traits through a diversity panel set of brassica and uh, by using the multi trait mixed model where we could find the five clusters and these clusters were very distinctly showing the very uh, origin of the material from where they are coming they were coming and even the source and the quality and the short duration wise and the from the various institutions where they were developed because many of the institutions they are using the same set of material so that is very clearly showing and i think that information will be definitely used used in our hybrid breeding program as well as the transgressive breeding program also we we could find that brassica carinata as i mentioned that these lines which were provided by our honorable dg sir at that time and some of the Canadian teams and other people also visited our program. Our honorable uh, former DG, Dr. Mangalara, I also visited that program, and they liked this material very much. With Carinata, I would like to say that this is one of the best, highest tolerant material for the various biotic biotic species among the six species which we are growing in our country, and uh, it has a very high degree of tolerance to drought, high degree of tolerance to stress. Cladotonia temperate also where we are not finding any natural uh, resistant source in the case of our available germ plan. So we try to use this program material after characterization and we are using it frequently. And some of the lines which were derived by in, uh, hybridization of Brassica carinata and Brassica gentia, we could, uh, I think, uh, develop some introgression lines in our hybrid development program. And one of our students under the guidance of Dr. Naveen, he has already published a very good paper under the frontier science with the, by for using these uh, introgress lines for enhancing the water user efficiency in the parental lines of the different hybrid so i could find from this uh, overall study and based on my experience that the synthetic lines which were developed by our honorable professor uh, rauth who was working on cytogenetics part of the brassica and uh, he developed a array of the synthesized early gentia and other gentia lines where scg2 which has been released as one of the variety pusagrani and was one of the very wonderful variety at that time when it was just maturing in 150 days where the other varieties they were maturing in 150 days when uh, this uh, scg2 pusagrani was maturing just 115 days likewise this vsl5 is pusa jagannath that was also released somewhere in 1999 and that was also a very good potential variety and till now this variety is very popular very high yield but some of the defects we are trying to remove of this variety so these are all the synthetic material then the exotic material and we tried to have some interspecies process and uh, through use of this material i think we could develop at least five six varieties which are very popular now which i'll i'll be just discussing with all of you so through this program actually for higher yielding we used this synthetic brassica gentia and vsl5 pusa jagannath and we could develop one variety pusa vijay during 2008 which was initially released for the ncr region but got popular in almost all the northeastern plain zone and central india and this variety is having 2.5 tons per hectare seed yield and the beauty of this variety is that it is highly tolerant to high temperature at seedling stage so that was the first type of variety at that time generally the high temperature is a big problem for master growing areas nowadays because the general time of sowing for the brassica uh, this indian mustard in the northwestern and central india is 26 degree centigrade average temperature and uh, generally we find that during last 20 years uh, my experience that during the month of whole august 1 to 20th august is the sowing time for mustard but uh, in most of the 
month of the August, generally the average temperature remains 28 to 30 degrees centigrade, that it is too high, where the mortality of the seedlings happens. So keeping that in view, we try to work more on the heat tolerance and the, the other materials which we have developed, they are very highly tolerant to high temperature at seedling stage. And uh, that is one contribution. And this variety actually we proposed as the replacement of Pusa Bold. And really it did it as a replacement for Pusa Bold and it is very popular in the central India as well as Northwestern zone. Likewise, this RGN 13, when I was working at Sri Ganganagar, this variety was also uh, that program was initiated, which was released in 2007. And this variety is having a very wide adaptability and it has uh, played a very good role during 2008 to till now up to 2019 20, when these varieties are going out of the seed production chain with the introduction of new varieties, as well as the uh, barrier uh, that uh, condition of the government of India for not taking more than 10 years for varieties in the seed chain. So these were some of the varieties in the hybrid program. I think we are doing very excellently. I, I have just uh, left that part for my last uh, component of this presentation, where I'll be discussing about the hybrid. Then comes the adaptation to the various cropping system. As in the beginning, as I have told that the mustard is being grown at all in almost all the parts of the country and under the various seasons. Sometimes it is going uh, grown as early sown in the month of September. Sometimes it is grown as late sown in the month of end December. And uh, likewise, in the northeastern plain zones, in the southern zone also we have now introduced. So we need to have the varieties which have the wider adaptability. For particularly for the early sown material, earlier Brassica rapa, that we generally call as Toria, that was being grown in many parts of the country where the, this crop was being taken as a uh, additional crop between the Kharif and Ravi season. But we could find that Brassica rapa is as such was not that higher yielder and it was uh, hardly uh, giving uh, 8 to 10 quintals of seed yield under very good conditions and settling was a very weak program with Brassica Repa. So in this direction, Dr. R. N. Rao, who initiated the early breeding program, we also continued that program by using the material which he has developed for the early Brassica Gentia synthetic Gentia, and we could got a good access. And now we have the varieties as a good substitute to the uh, Storia varieties and which we are now growing in many parts of the country. Before that, we just tried to have a plant type that can be fitting in the various cropping system, which should have the high biomass as well as should have a high harvest index from 0.2 to 2.1 to 0.23, and it should mature under the very varied ecological conditions, starting from 100 days to 150 days. And that type of material we could develop and one of the our genotype NPJ 176, we could read it, which was maturing in just 85 days. That was an actual real replacement of Toria and that material was working very well. We are now using that material in our base various breeding program. In this direction, by using the various material developed by Dr. Aaron Rao through our breeding program and our, after identifying the good parental lines, we could develop one of the variety Pusa Mustard 25. This was released in 2010. And till now, amongst the Brassic Agencia genotypes, it is the shortest maturing variety uh, till now, which is maturing just in 100 days and giving almost 14 kg per day per hectare seed yield as compared to the much lower uh, that uh, seed yield in other crop. Likewise, the other variety, Pusa Mustard 27, this was, I think uh, this program was being taken Care of uh, earlier by uh, our honorable Dr. Jain Sinha, and this material after his superinitiation came to us, and this was already in the advanced stage. So we just promoted this material. This is also a short duration material maturing in 115 days with 15.3 quintals per hectare and having a very high seed oil, oil content of 41.7%. And this variety is having the high temperature, shielding stage tolerance, and also tolerance to, to salinity. And both these varieties, I think. They have a very uh, good area, and one of the studies which was done by Dr. Uh, by NIAP, Dr. Suresh Pal, and Dr. Prabhos, where they could find from the various primary and secondary data that the this Pusa Master 25 have has generated the uh, total economic surplus of 14,323 crores during 2010 to 18, and its breeder seed intent has also been very high during last these 11 years. Likewise, the same case happened with the, this Pusa Master 27 also. 
heat as i have told that is a big issue nowadays and whole of our material we need to screen for the high temperature tolerance to make a variety successful for this purpose from gangnagar itself i was trying to have the all the advanced material starting from f5 f6 f7 and uh, for the material which we are giving to the station trials also to show it at the four various showing times one was in the month of and august or in the beginning of september where the temperature was very high up to 40 degree centigrade soil temperature and then the timely sown rain fed and late sown from early sown material we were finding the material which was having tolerance to chilling stage uh, heat tolerance and for the late sown we were getting the material which was tolerant to the high temperature at the time of reproductive stage and for rain fed and uh, timely also we were finding the good material and that was a very successful experiment and now this experiment is included in the aicrp trials also where the four dates of sowing for screening the material for the various uh, sowing conditions for the various temperature regimes that is being done so this was a program under the natural conditions so we tried to develop a protocol under the guidance of dr kv prabhu through one of our student azuruddin mohammad azuruddin and uh, we we could develop a very robust protocol which we published in the crop improvement as a special issue and this protocol is being used throughout the country in the under the aicrp rep seed master program and is a very successful program for identifying the seedling stage high temperature tolerant rest cover plant so through using this technique this protocol we could develop the pusa master 28 one of the variety of early sown and short duration material and this variety we released in 2011 and uh, it is having the highest yield two tons per hectare in just 105 days and the highest per day productivity of 18.63 kg uh, per day per hectare with 41.5% oil content and this variety is also amongst the uh, top 5 6 varieties which i have just mentioned in the breeder seed as well as the actually area occupied by this variety and by using this protocol many varieties by the different centers they are developing and we could develop a donor also for the high temperature tolerance and which has been registered with the nbtgr the high temperature at the reproductive stage and the frost these are the two issues generally which are very serious particularly under the red fed condition many times farmers are not having the proper sowing time because of the uh, either the rains are not there sometimes the uh, october end rains are there sometimes the fields are not vacated by the end of october so they have to go for the late sown conditions and uh, as far as the total area of 6.7 million ton million hectares is concerned so 45% area is in rajasthan out of the 60% area is under the rain fed moisture condition where generally the population the stand of the crop is also a problem and generally after every 4 to 5 years the frost is also coming so for late sown condition generally the force maturity is there high trust is there aphid is there and in that case the seed size of the variety reduces like anything the oil content comes down to 30% 20 31% and the total yield is also reduced so that is a triple loss to the farmer likewise in case of frost also many times the under the uh, rain fed condition there are huge losses under the fresh frost and 100% losses are there so through this our screening program under natural conditions from sri gangnagar itself we could identify some of the lines which were uh, later on released as varieties so this pusa uh, mustard uh, 26 is one variety which has been recommended for late sown conditions during 2010 uh, under uh, north western plain zone with 16 quintals per hectare yield likewise from rajasthan material also rgn 145 also a rain variety recommended for late sown it was released in 2009 and with 15.5 quintals yield per hectare and the, you see the oil content is 13.5% and 37.5% and the same case is with pusa master 26 also we could develop one variety rgn 13 and this was found the best variety under screening when the frost was there under natural conditions and uh, we we could find uh, that as a frost tolerant variety which was released in 2003 likewise argen 48 was released for northwestern plain zone which was drought as well as frost tolerant and this variety also i think found a very good place at farmers field during its uh, active time of the seed production so if we see in the early maturing material the toria we see that is having 10 quintals per hectare seed yield 11.36 kg per day per hectare uh, 
uh, yield uh, that uh, productive uh, per, um, that seed production. Whereas we tried here, and my, my seniors, Dr. Rao, then Dr. Uh, Jayan Singh, uh, they they produced these varieties, and they were also in the maturity group of 115 to 120 days and having a very high yield, but they were not fitting exactly under the uh, that uh, to replace the thoria. And in this direction, we, we made a very significant progress where this PUSA mustard 25, which was just uh, having 14.7 quintals per hectare yield is maturing in 100 days, and per, per, per day productivity was low. And we just tried there through PM27, and PM28 is one of our varieties, you know, 20 quintals per hectare seed yield, and per day productivity is 18.63 kg per day per hectare. And which is a, also a record, and this variety, as I told, these all these varieties are very popular among the farmers. Through these varieties, actually, we, we took all these varieties, Pusa Mustard 25, 26, 27, and 28, to the northeastern states when Dr. H. S. Gupta was our director, and in the month of August 2013, he directed to me and uh, asked Dr. Prabhu to take at least 10 quintals of seed of these progression varieties which were released just two, three years back at that time. We managed to take this seed within one week at Parapani and Dr. Gupta, Dr. Prabhupada, and myself, we went there. We had a meeting with all the state functionary and with the different uh, uh, that KVKs and uh, Atari. And uh, this material, I think, now is occupying almost one million hectare area in the northeastern India under the Rice Fellow Program. Then comes the quality issues in case of mustard. We, we know that in uh, we brassica oil is one of the best oil in terms of the having a very less saturated fat of 7%. But one of the two issues are there uh, in addition to the oil content enhancement. That is one is the uric acid, which is almost 40% in our conventional variety and the, the glucosinate, so which goes in the seed meal, which is almost more than 100 ppm and ex international acceptance is that erucic acid should be less than 2% for good health and this glucose acid should be less than 30 ppm. And the varieties which are having, the, any of the brassica varieties which are having less than 2% erucic acid and uh, less than 30 ppm glucose in the seed milk cake is called as double zero or canola. So these, these are having some problems, health problems, erucic acid particularly for the uh, heart problem as well as in children also they are having the problem. Glucosinate has the problem of whiter with the non ruminants and even they reduce the productivity of animals and there are so many issues are there with the higher feeding. So in this direction already Dr. R.S. Malik, my uh, EI at that time uh, who retired in 2006, he was taking care of the quality work and we were having a manual GC and generally eight to 10 samples were being done. But uh, Dr. Prabhu suggested that we should have a large scale screening program for vitra, uh, this uh, quality component, particularly fatty acid profile. And uh, the major issue was that uh, to make the esters for uh, having the analysis of the fatty acid, that was a very lengthy process and was taking much time as well as much of the resources. So Dr. Sujata, being the biochemist in the program, she developed a methodology, a simplified method for preparation of fatty acid methyl esters, which takes hardly 15 minutes to prepare the sample. And in a day, we can prepare almost 80 to 90 samples. And we, through one of the DBT program, we could get a automatic GC, which was doing almost uh, 85 to 86 samples per day. And continuously after the crop season, up to October sowing time, this machine is generally working regularly. Now we have replaced that under the supervision of Dr. Sujata and all my other colleagues. And during this period, I think we have screened more than one lakh of the various materials, including the segregated population, the maintenance breeding program, and all the material which we are having in the quality breeding program. So the first variety, Pusa Charisma 2002, uh, was released. That is the country's first single zero variety that was released by Dr. Uh, Malik at that time. But the issue with the so this quality material was that its seed size was very less. And the plant type was also not desirable many times. The agronomic traits were not good and people were not liking that. And maintenance was also a big part. These variety, Pusa Master 21, 24, and 22, all these three entries, they were in the coordinated trials when Dr. Malik retired. But many times they were deferring these materials because of the heterozygosity for the fatty acid profile. And in many centers, the erucic acid content was coming high. So that was one issue. 
and we try to address this issue and these varieties that the oil content and uric acid they have the direct correlation and once you reduce the uric acid so oil content was also reducing and in these many of the varieties the oil content came to these four varieties 34 to 35% except this usa karishma and uh, that that's why the farmers were not coming and we were also not confident because of the maintenance as well as having the uh, i think uh, the oil content lower in these varieties so through our concerted efforts we tried to have the good segregants which could have the better yield better agronomic traits of the variety as well as the higher oil content and in this direction the success was reached in 2013 when with the development and release of usa master 30 where this was released for central india where the yield average was 18.2 per quintal per hectare but this is being grown widely in the northwestern plain zone also with 22 to 23 quintals per hectare with bold seed size of 5.38 which is the choice of the farmers as well as the good oil content in comparison to earlier varieties likewise this pusa master 29 was also one variety but because of the its high very high height it was not so much popular and the seed size was also not desirable to the farmers but this variety is doing very well and we have commercialized this variety for the development of value chain and doing very well in the area then uh, professor ms swaminathan when he visited once uh, the, he was just talking about the uh, canola type material which uh, we were not able to develop by that time and uh, we made our concerted efforts and uh, during 2015 we could develop a first variety of the country pusa 00 mustard 31 and this variety is also a very good variety with 41% oil content and 23.2 quintals per hectare and this variety is doing very well and i think a very good quantity of breeder seed we are getting later on the last two years were very successful our quality breeding program we could breed a single zero variety pusa master 32 with 27 quintals yield per hectare which is the highest amongst the release variety till now and uh, this Pusa double zero master thirty three again a variety released during this year twenty six point four quintals per hectare with good seed size also so these varieties are the future varieties and I am hundred percent sure that they will be the land variety mark variety in the future. As I mentioned that there when we were dr malik retired so we were facing a difficulty of the mixture or the purity of the material quality material so. Dr. Prabhu suggested to have a student on this particular part for having the maintenance breeding protocol development. And Bala Subramanian was my student, MSc student, whom we give this uh, uh, particular program. And we had the four uh, that uh, types of uh, the selfing system. One was under the net condition. One was through the drilling bag, and another was through the parchment paper, and was one was the open pollinated. So through his studies during the four seasons, we could find that the but so our material we were growing in the net and our surrounding the net all was the high erucic acid material so there was no change in the fatty acid profile and the erucic acid content remained the same even after four years of growing that material in the net conditions which was surrounded by the high erucic acid material of mustard so we standardized this and this material this protocol we are now using very frequently for our maintenance breeding program because for the um, advanced material which we are giving the trials it is very difficult to find the location so this uh, net system that was devised in 2006 under the guidance of dr kv prabhu and we are using those nets and later on we could develop a network permanent with the pipe like in the tent house and we can take this uh, whole peripheralia to any field and that can be fitted just within 3 to 4 days my percent are now very i think uh, trained under this for this we try to use the genomic tools also for the development of double zero as this uric acid is being controlled by two recessive genes but the glucosinolate is being controlled by 10 7 to 8 to tls and uh, that was a big problem so the delhi university dr deepak pantel and his group he developed some snp to snp for the low uric acid and some high qtls for the uh, glucosinolates we tried this program through one of our dvt program and we could develop uh, the two varieties pusa karishma and pusa master 21 in the double zero and that material is already i think in advanced stage and we we validated all those markers but these snps and other markers they were having the problem of operationalization due to the cost as well as time consumption so my colleagues dr navindar and uh, madam sujata 
uh, they they could develop the caps caps markers for the fatty acid along with gene 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2 which is working very nicely now in our breeding program likewise they also developed some stms markers also for the fatty acid profile which is being used in the breeding program and uh, the sts marker developed for the glucosinate also and uh, earlier those five qtls which we were using at some two two markers for the white breast were also there and these are being were validated and these markers sts markers they have been developed and now being used in the breeding program. The marker assisted program through one of the consortium research platform on molecular breeding, we are now converting these four varieties, Pusa Jagannath, as I mentioned, this is still a very popular and potential variety, Pusa 21 and 22, and we are trying to progress the glucosinate as well as the white rust resistant uh, traits in these varieties, and this material is now in advanced stage, and this year we were having the material in the station trials, and uh, this material was having almost 3.2 tons per hectare and uh, the, the in-progress material with high trust, low elucic acid and low glucosinate as per the international standard. If we see the journey of IRI from Pusa Kisan released somewhere in 1960s with 16 quintals per hectare and 11.3 kg per day per uh, that productivity, we, we could reach that uh, with Pusa Vijay, we reached to the productivity of 25 quintals per hectare with 17.85 kg per day productivity. And later on, with the introduction of low uric acid variety, that reduced. But now you see, generally, that is a that the it is saying that the quality varieties are having lower yield. But in this case, we find that Pusa Master 31 is 23.2 quintals per hectare, 16.45 kg per hectare per day yield uh, productivity. Likewise, this 2032 is having 27.1 uh, quintals yield average with 18.44 kg per day per uh, um, their productivity and likewise Pusa Mustard 33, this is one of the double zero variety and the double zero variety, our director Dr. A.K. Singh, he suggested to give the name as Indola because the Canadian material is called as Canola. So now we are registering all material as in the name of Indola, which have been developed by our program. Then comes some uh, biotic, biotic species program. So we, we did a lot of work. One of my first students, Dr. Vignesh, now he's a scientist in the maze group with Dr. Firoz. So he worked a lot on the white stress resistance for identification of the donors, for validation of some of the markers which were developed by Dr. Prabhu and Dr. Mahapatra earlier. And we could identify the various donor sources and we did the allelic studies also and good material was identified which we are using in our breeding program. Till now, and uh, with the, in collaboration with the pathology division, one of the student of Dr. Bernwal, he did the work on this Rasika uh, uh, Rapa, and a, a typical disease was identified in the northwestern plain John, and on the advice of the then director of the DRMR Bharatpur, Dr. Arvind Kumar, he said that you should do a uh, in-depth study on that, and through that student, uh, uh, we we could uh, identify a new disease, pigeon P with broom uh, uh, of uh, this storia. And uh, this disease was reported in the plant disease reporter. And uh, likewise, my colleague, Dr. Lakshman, in the division of plant pathology and one of the collaborators of our program, we were facing the difficulty of disease. In the early shown material, generally, the whole the material was that was withering and a uh, rotting was there. So uh, we uh, he, he took this task and he could identify again a new report of fusarium equity in this, uh, which was actually causing the stem and root rot, and now its uh, production has also been recommended by them. One of my colleague in plan, uh, this NCIPM, who was also a collaborator in our program, was looking after the IPM component at larger scale in Rajasthan and Haryana, and through his 10 years experimentation with the material supply as well as our input, I visited also at many of the locations, he could give a prioritized package component for adopting the IPM technology in case of mustard, which is now very popular in those areas. Some other disease-related programs in pathology with Dr. Banwal, with Dr. Dinesh Singh through his students as a member of the advisory committee, and we could develop, we could identify and could give some of the recommendations for the various diseases like the Genthamonas compestris, and uh, the uh, that that is already published, and the information is being used. Likewise, the sclerotinia is a big issue, and uh, Dr. M. S. Yadav, who was associated with this program, he could identify some of the sources, particularly in case of Brassica carinata, and in Gentia also. And those sources we are trying now to use in our breeding program. And uh, uh, likewise, this uh, uh, one of the 
scientist under DST program, women scientist, Dr. Pratish, who is working under my mentorship for last three years. And earlier she was working with Dr. S.R. Bhatt in NRC plant, particularly after his retirement and having the good assi new assignment as a working women scientist under DST, she is in revision of genetics. And through the somal colloidal hybridization, she could develop a, a very good lines, fixed lines now, which have been registered with NBPGR also through the Sanapis Alba and Brassica Gentia hybridization program, which are having the high degree of tolerance to sclerotonia stem rot, as well as to the Alternaria Brassici, which are the two diseases where we are not getting the natural source of resistance. So this will also be helping a lot. My colleague Najunandan at uh, our IR regional station, Wellington. Wellington has a very significant role. I will like to thank the heads of the, that division and that, is, uh, that station. They have been very helpful for the, our oxygen nursery. And every year from May to uh, September and or uh, uh, October beginning, we are taking all our material there and that material is being screened there. And uh, Dr. Nanjulandan could find from his work after his posting there, one of the line RDV29 as powdery mildew resistant line, which was also a problem in case of Brashika. We were not having any natural source of resistance to this uh, powdery mildew. Likewise, my colleague, Dr. Rukesh Dillo, Dillo, working in the division of entomology, one of our collaborators, APD is a big issue. Until now, there was no screening technique for apis resistance. So with his, I think, hard work, he could develop a technique for the aphid screening in the field itself, where he tested the uh, that net as well as the full plant uh, selfing drilling bag and the twig selfing drilling bag. So do, in the twig selfing drilling bag, by inoculating with the different stage aphid through the bulb in, he could find that that is working very well. And these materials are being distinguishing various material, uh, this uh, technique is distinguishing the various materials, particularly the quality and non-quality material. And even in the uh, non-quality material, traditional material also, we are able to screen the level of resistance or the, uh, that uh, in that material. So that is also now being adopted. Under the component building, uh, enhancing building efficiency, so as I mentioned in the quality and white trust, we are already using the markers and we could uh, work on that and uh, under the guidance of Dr. Tim Apatra, as our chairmen have told that uh, in the beginning I was for a long term training and later on I was regularly associated with him and he was also a collaborator in our program so we could develop some good genomic resources and uh, later on Dr. Navinder, Dr. Uh, Madam Sujata and uh, Dr. Uh, Jaspal also they could develop some of the material which is being used. Then comes the human resource development program. I, during this uh, last 19 years, I was associated with four courses in the division of genetics and uh, two courses, one course in the division of seed science and technology. One of the course building field probes I am associated with last 17 years since it was started during 2005-06 and for the fundamental concepts of plant building as well as quality course. So I have been contributing significantly by taking whatsoever the uh, person was allotted to me. Uh, as far as the student guidance, uh, Vignesh, uh, now he's a scientist in the maize genetics, was my first student who worked on the white rust for the molecular mapping. And uh, he could identify the very good donors also and could develop a good mapping population. And he tried to map that, but the distance was too low, uh, too, uh, too high. Dessing was my second student who also worked on the quality. And uh, he also could uh, validate some of the markers and could identify some of the material which we are now using. Bala Subramaniam, as I told that he was my student and he is now in the private sector, just joined after his MSc program, although he joined PhD with me, but because of some circumstances, he joined as a seed certification officer now and is doing well there. As far as PhD students are concerned, I have guided four PhD students. Aziruddin worked on the high temperature tolerance and developed that protocol. Pushpa was working on the glucosinate content and now working as scientist at IIOR Hyderabad and Chandana worked on the uh, virus resistance, the work which was left by Dr. Vignes, that part she completed and uh, she is now assistant professor plant breeding genetics at OUAT, Bhavani Patna and Om Prakash also worked on the terminal high temperature tolerance, Ajar worked on the seedling stage tolerance and uh, he is now scientist at Central Silk Board and all are doing very well at their uh, 
for posting. Presently, I am guiding four of my students. Subhas has already joined scientist and uh, he was on his uh, PhD and now joined and uh, likely to complete his work by the end of this season. Saroj has also completed and he has already given the thesis for correction to our uh, committee. Dr. Vijay Kamal, uh, is, uh, Vijay Kamal is now in the third year and Manoj is in third year and their work is going on. I have been the co-chairman of two of MSc students, Dr. Vinu and uh, Dr. Rajkumar and uh, co-chairman of the seven PhD students uh, uh, still. And I was the member other than this of the advisory committee of the various students in the different disciplines and guided almost 40 students during that period. And uh, I was associated in the various uh, PG school activities when the, during the admissions or as a board of study member and also a member of the board of management for the many of the universities like JNKVV and uh, uh, Agriculture University Bikaner, IGKV and some of the private universities and also finalized the discipline of uh, the syllabus for discipline of ARS. Uh, I also, we conducted a uh, summer school during 2004, uh, 2009 and uh, I was instrumental in organizing the 19 international trainings for the faculty and students of the various countries, including the ARDO and uh, other countries, and uh, which was very, were very successful program. As far as publications are concerned, so I have total 91 publications along with my team, out of which five publications are in the more than five NAS rating journal and uh, 11 are in the, from eight to 9.9, .9, and uh, 50 are between five, six to 7.9 and 25 or less than Right. Other than the research publications, I have 236 other publications, the book, book chapter, training manual, senior, senior studies, papers, and all. And these are some of the journals where we have published our work with the help of our colleagues and uh, as a team. Then the various awards uh, that our chairman Shah has already mentioned, I'm not taking time. And the upscaling of technology that was is a post important task, I think, uh, whatsoever we develop. If it is not going to the farmers, then it is a big issue. So we, uh, in, with the help of our directors earlier, Dr. H. S. Gupta, Dr. H. S. Patil, the joint directors, Dr. Uh, Prabhu, Dr. Kondal, Madam Dadlani, and the head of divisions earlier, Dr. Prabhu, Dr. K. Uh, Dr. K. Singh, and the, with the help of our cadet and extension people, we could uh, popularize our varieties, and the result was that uh, almost 50% of the breeder seed was, in the case of Indian mustard, was coming for the varieties developed by IRI, and that trend is being maintained till now. We started when this material started coming during 2010-11 when it came to the seed chain, and now you see that uh, almost except two years, it is it has gone less than 40%. Uh, otherwise, it is more than 40%. We are touching up to 56% in some of the years. So that is the one of the satisfying. Point. And if we see the varieties developed by me, you see this red line. Uh, these are the materials which have been developed after my involvement at uh, IRA. And uh, you see that now most of these varieties have replaced the older varieties. As the reason I told that the older varieties have been put out of the government schemes like RKY and NFSM, and only the new varieties are taken. And the, these varieties are very potential quality, early maturity, and the high temperature tolerance. These are the traits which are making these is popular and out of the one of the very satisfying i think a, a remarkable thing which is happening with the resica program these all are the checks i think these are the 12 checks which are being used in the various aicrp program at the national level so that is also a very high, highly satisfying point and if we see the share of ira variety during last 10 years it is 45 percent and for the other sector it is 55 percent and 21 percent share from IRI varieties are where I have been associated in development of those varieties. Upscaling through commercialization, that is one, I think, very important issue. Dr. Patil started it, later on Dr. Prabhu take it to the very newer heights and now Dr. A.K. Singh is also taking care of that. And uh, we could uh, commercialize these varieties through 22 MOA to 10 different companies. And these eight varieties are now are under MOA, and all the uh, our uh, companies they are taking the breeder seed regularly, and I think they are spreading on a very larger area. One of our incubity, the urban seeds, uh, you see, this is Dr. Bhagirath Chaudhary, who, who who looks after this program. So he had the license for Pusa Master 30, and he launched this lifeguard as one of the and this was launched by our noble. Uh, 
uh, agriculture minister sri radha mohan singh ji and during one of the agm of icr and now this oil is having a very good i think uh, circulation and uh, uh, having a very good share in the market in uh, particularly in the north western plain zone and uh, the pm 30 was also recognized by our honorable prime minister when during the his program of dedication of variety zone 28 of september one of our farmer uh, kulwant that was also uh, honorable prime minister interacted with him for the quality varieties and he was very gave very satisfying reply and kulwant is involved in the production and popularization of the quality varieties as well as their oil and they are putting the oil low risk acid oil at our sale counter at iri also likewise we took these varieties to the non traditional areas the story i told about that that gupta took the initiative and later on we followed it in toto and uh, as i told now we have almost 1 million hectare area under this short duration variety in the northwestern northeast northeastern region and in the southern region also with the help of dr nanju now at the tamil nadu center of iri and he is making lot of efforts in particularly in karnataka and andhra pradesh and our quality as well as early material they are doing very well the quality material is like there in the southern state because they don't like pungency and the bitterness and because of the non pungency and bitterness these oils they were are now liking and uh, the pm 30 is doing very well in those areas and uh, now they are getting taking the seed a huge quantity of seed we are supplying to for these places <clears throat> as it is a seed the uh, some of the responsibilities were given by our dg to me of this biofortification was one aspect as the growth has presented there are so many varieties they were developed but there was no documentation so he gave this responsibility to me during 2018 at the time only 17 varieties were there and now we are publishing its fourth uh, edition where we have 85 varieties and the publication of this actually bulletin that helped popularizing these varieties and this was having a very wider circulation from the pmo to the niti ayog to the various state government departments and uh, we published this uh, with the Uh, under the guidance of our honorable dg sir and dr kroj uh, we we published uh, this uh, one this uh, biofortification component under the indian journal of medical research also and that became very popular and uh, very highly cited and uh, now i am as a resource person after this publication for niti ayog for women and child development department agriculture and farmer welfare rural development and panchayati raj icmr harvest plus program and also visited in one of the program on bio fortification to sri lanka also and uh, some of the mass derived varieties which uh, are there in many crops now so that bulletin was also published that bulletin was also very helpful and particularly for the state government for climate resilient varieties and now these varieties have also reached to 74 and uh, its second edition we are bring it out very shortly with the already in the printing uh, as it is said as our dg saab i told that is my responsibility so there was some rationalization of the breeder seed many times we were getting very high indents for the breeder seed other than the requirement you see that uh, the, so we we tried to rationalize this and now we have brought it down from 1 lakh quintal to 80000 quintals and by reducing the unnecessary indents and which was putting a pressure on the various centers because the breeder seed requires the special attention and uh, what sort the indents we are getting we are fulfilling that the varietal mismatch as our did is have told that it was 34.4% during 1617 when i joined and that was a actually plot on us means in most of the things dsc was raising this question varietal mismatch means a Uh, company or corporation has indented variety a but i am not able to provide the seed of variety a and i am happy to provide the seed of variety b so in that condition that is called as the mismatch and now we have brought it down to 60.9% except soybean and urd in most of the crops like pigeon pea groundnut chickpea ripe mustard wheat it is very less and in the times to come we'll be definitely doing that with our concerted efforts during the allotment of the breeder seed along with the joint secretary seed we we did an exercise to uh, that phase out the older varieties so during last 5 years we could get a very good success and if you see in case of wheat now the 5 years old varieties are occupying 50% uh, that area or the uh, for the breeder seed and 10 years varieties are 77% likewise in case of uh, many crops the good progress has been made and in other crops are also we are doing as the dg seed and uh, under the guidance of our honorable dg 
sir and did is i am also involved in many of the policy issues like the biological diversity amendment bill 2021 the seed bill 2022 state seed rolling plan and the seed traceability software which dc is now developing that will be i think game changer for the quality availability of quality seed in the country so in that also i am a part part for development of that software and to summarize with i have been uh, associated in development to 21 varieties and 66 research papers are in the peer reviewed high impact journals out of total 91 the three methodology for which we developed for the ester uh, this methyl esters for the uh, this heat tolerance and the aphid as well as for the nucleus seed production for quality material and uh, we upscaled the technologies the area which we see so that is uh, i think that efforts of the team as well as the institute they have resulted and uh, actively involved in the human resource development and the various policy issues of the government of india so the way forward we have the challenges of climate change emerging insect pests deteriorating and reducing cultivable lands water scarcity increasing population as well as the untimely rains which we are facing during last 2 3 years for that i think my colleagues they will have to reorient their breeding program i have been the part with them and presently as well as i'll be there with them in future also so now we need the mustard varieties and hybrids with 4 tons per hectare of seed yield and the with the present variety of 2.7 tons and oil content generally we are having 40% on an average but we need to enhance the oil content which has not been addressed very significantly or specifically to 45% the short duration varieties up to 100 days we are have heavy but to have the multiple cropping system and to replace the thoria exactly and as per the vision of our honorable prime minister to have the short duration varieties as well as having the low water requiring varieties to fulfill his dream of more proper pro so we need to have the 90 days variety with the for multiple cropping system and for non traditional areas sclerotonia stem rot and orobenki these are the two culprits i think which are a very serious for the mustard breeding program where we are having some sources we are not having some sources some of the reports i have presented so i think the biotechnological tools will have to be uh, used for that maybe it is uh, genome editing or maybe genetic engineering and because now they are becoming one of the hurdle and reducing the area of mustard in many of the traditional mustard growing areas the drought and heat tolerance they are also very serious and i think water use efficiency as well as nutrient use efficiency that needs to be addressed and the various issues for the low uric acid and high oleic we generally in our material when we compare to the canola the oleic acid is 44 47% otherwise in canola it is more than 60% and so we need to address that and tocopherol alpha tocopherol the issue which is being addressed by one by one of my students that also need to be taken care of low glucose net uh, is a also serious problem and uh, because of the high glucose net in uh, the our seed milk cake most of our seed milk cake is being exported to the under developing or developing countries at the rate of 20 rupees per kg but if we have the low low glucose net content as per the international standards it rate goes to uh, 50 to 100% higher so that is also will be adding to the income to the farmers and area expansion as we are trying now and uh, under the hybrid program already we are doing well under the using the three site sources my colleague dr kuli and navin he is doing very well and through the crp on hybrid technology which i am coordinating from national level also so a good progress has been made and i think we have to meet the levels of the uh, yield which uh, just i have mentioned so definitely within years 2 uh, 3 years will be getting to the hybrid and the gene editing and gene genetic engineering is the i think next hope for the uh, addressing all those issues some of the policy supports that permission for the transgenics and approval of genome editing guidelines which we have been uh, talking time and again at the uh, icr level and special funding for research in oil seed and ensure procurement uh, for the uh, return uh, this uh, for retaining the farmers for the mustard growing area during last year it was very good so that is almost 1.5 million hectare area has been in trade so these are some of the glimpses of the various uh, dignitaries which have visited our mustard program as well as in the usa kisan mela and uh, they have guided us and uh, encouraged us during their visits and in the last uh, this is the slide to acknowledge uh, all my mentors and my teachers uh, as far as ira is concerned so i think uh, 
Dr. Prabhu and Dr. Mahapatra, they have been my mentor in the Resika breeding program when I since I joined, and uh, they have helped a lot. Dr. Ashi Prasad, he was my PI when I joined, and his support and encouragement every time for almost two and a half years. These are my three technicals who are actually the backbone of the program. They all have superintended now, and the guidance which I received from all our superintended. PIs in the Brashika program, Dr. Arshi Prasad, Dr. R.S. Malik, Dr. Shyam Prakash, who is not, no more now, Dr. R. N. Rawat, Dr. Jain Singh, Dr. R. K. Katiyar is also no more there, Dr. Shanti is also not there, Dr. S. S. Yadav, Dr. V.P. Singh in Rice, because he was every time guiding about the quality component, how to take these brands to the farmers, Dr. M. L. Loda and Dr. S. R. Bhatt. So the, they were always in our support and till now also they are in our support. And my sincere thanks to our honorable DG sir for his all support, my DG sir for his encouragement and every time very friendly and uh, supporting like anything. Dr. A.K. Singh, I don't have any words for his cooperation and uh, friendly as well as the mentorship role which he's playing and encouraging not only me, to whole of the team of Brashika and, and the professors of Division of Genetics, uh, all the, my seniors and the heads of IRI Regional Station Karnal and Wellington who are very, uh, I think, uh, important for us for the white rust program and seed production program. And uh, the seed production program at uh, Karnal uh, was looked after by Dr. Uh, Rajkumar earlier, and now Dr. Aran Yadav is looking after. And the seed production program at seed production unit uh, is being looked after by uh, Dr. Uh, Ganendra Singh. And I think the quantity which we were producing earlier 20 uh, quintals or so for the quality sheet that has gone to more than 200 quintals now. And he is increasing that volume with his dedication and concerted efforts. And the head division of plant physiology, Dr. Vishwanathan, Madam Pramila, and uh, vegetable that time, Dr. Kalia, Dr. Agriculture Chemicals, Dr. Nukma, Dr. Nematology, Dr. Uh, Rao, and uh, the Agriculture and Science, and Dr. Premlata. So they were also very helpful in the whole program for one or the other things which they always helped us. The Phytotron, uh, earlier Dr. Prabhu and now Dr. Talukdar, and the Bosu, Dr. Khanna, as well as in the Katet, Dr. earlier this, uh, Dr. Uh, J.P. Davas. So they are very helpful every time. And uh, the all the faculty of seed science as well as faculty of division of genetics, they have been very helpful all of the time. And I would also like to acknowledge the DBT, NSF, and the ICR. ICR through the CRPs, uh, for CRPs which are working incentivizing research in agriculture. And my whole team, Brasica and all collaborators, the team, I, I am not able to take the name of each and all. So the current team is there. And uh, I have mentioned the name of each and everybody during my presentation. And uh, the finally, my collaborators from the different divisions, I think I mentioned about Dr. Banwal, Dr. Tinesh, and uh, the other collaborators, Dr. Uh, uh, Sanjay in uh, agronomy earlier, Dr. Rana, and uh, likewise in plant pathology, Dr. Lakshman and Dr. Uh, <coughs> M.S. Yadav from NCIPM, and uh, entomology, the earlier Dr. Devjani, now Dr. Mukesh uh, is looking after, and uh, the other colleagues in the Division of Seed Science and Technology, Dr. Sangeeta, Dr. Chakravarti, and Dr. Kumar, they have also been associated with this program, and my own colleagues. I think uh, the last word, Dr. Sujata, who has been the instrumental in all these progress. The support which I got from Dr. Sujata throughout the program without any expectation, without anything, that is really a remarkable and an example in the research system. And uh, my colleague, Dr. Naveen, Dr. Navinder, Dr. Yaspal, Dr. Rajinder, so, so they all have been very helpful uh, during the whole entire program. And my SSS staff earlier, uh, that uh, Dr. Rajesh, Sri Rajesh, as well as Sri uh, Shiv Shankar and Mahendra Beta. So uh, I am very highly thankful to all of you. And finally, I am highly thankful to the director IRI and Dean PG and, and the honorable jury for uh, selecting me for this very prestigious award. And to finally to my family, my wife and my both sons and my brothers and all family members for their all time support and due to which I could have done to do something for the basic program as well as for the uh, country. Thank you very much, sir, for the very patient uh, listening. And uh, I have taken almost double the time which was given. Thanks to Chair and sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for excellent presentation of outstanding contributions. Uh, really, the setting the benchmark very high.
congratulations once again uh, for a well deserving ab joshi dr ab joshi memorial award uh, i take great pleasure in uh, inviting the illustrious stem uh, major of this session for his expert remarks thank you rav thank you very much uh, excellent presentation dr yadav it's indeed a treat for this evening and what a seminal contribution you have made for the indian infrastructure improvement program i think the whole group deserve appreciation and congratulations uh i don't think it's a time to repeat what dr yadav has said but uh, i would like to say few words about the presentation and the prasika program as a whole uh i would like to say that increasing edible oil production in the country is the top most priority of government of india is the number one priority now as told by dr yadav we are spending more than 75000 crore to 1 lakh crore rupees on the import of edible oils so you can simply see the the Uh, significance of this crop in which dr yadav has worked throughout his life uh while listening to him it uh, takes me back to my phd and post doctorate day when i was working on brassica species which i think many people probably may not be knowing that i started my career in brassica and doing interspecific and intergeneric hybrid hybridization using embryo rescue technique in 88 at many time people were not aware of those technologies in those times subsequent to that the, the 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 only criteria when i went to canada was of my brassica crop and love to brassica because uh, all canola type varieties and other thing is coming from canadian countries and most of the jar plus plants but coming back to the presentation here it was uh, indeed very interesting to listen to dr yadav not only his work the way he presented the way he acknowledged the contribution of previous workers and the present workers during his presentation is also very important for a scientist number 2 which you might have noticed that the group which in which he was he he, he is working still continuing to work in that group very vibrant group so group uh, working in a group and in a network mode is always desirable and always beneficial for all of us but group has to be very cohesive in nature which uh, dr yadav has shown today and uh, we, we he, time and again he was telling about low productivity of uh, brassicas about 1.3 tons per hectare in mustard so and in the way forward he himself showed certain very very interesting uh, areas which he has listed in his way forward that can be a very good guide for the younger generation or the colleagues who are working in brassica species but i would say that now time has come that we should try to focus more on development of hybrids otherwise it would be very difficult to to reach to the target of 4 tons or 1 3.5 tons per hectare but because of the nature in which dr yadav has worked it's a very tough trait which he has taken for his breeding programs for for example heat tolerant drought tolerant frost and wider adaptability all these four traits are quantitative in nature is are controlled by qtls so very difficult to handle with the with the with the approach which uh, uh, dr yadav was working a conventional approach and then later on he very extensively used marker assisted selection for the development of uh, quality mustard varieties particularly zero and double zero type of varieties uh, which has low erucic acid and also low glucosinolate content the quality aspect is very very important nowadays and the the type of work which he has shown is very very important but i would like to say that uh, at the one end we are trying to reduce erucic acid and glucosinolate content from the varieties let us not forget that these two important biochemical biomolecules are very very important for uh, 
uh, insect resistance and disease resistance. So uh, I used to tell whenever I talk about brassica species and its, its utilization for quality improvement is that let us try to find a germplasm line which has low erucic acid and glucosinolate content in, in, in the seed itself, but it should not be low in, in, the, in the foliage or in the shoots so that the, the foliage should be uh, should have a good quantity of uh, low glucose in, uh, high glucosinolate and erucic acid so that we can uh, avoid infestation by diseases and insects and now by using genome editing approach these two traits can be easily tackled by specifically uh, targeting the genes which are uh, expressing only in seed and making seed in and zero and double zero type uh, of variety. So uh, that, that's very important. And this, this quality area is always very difficult to work. Many people, they don't want to work in these areas. All these five traits, heat tolerant, drought, frost, adaptability, and quality. These are all cute quantitative traits in nature and very difficult to manage while doing breeding. You need large population to, to handle these, these traits. Uh, as far as yield is concerned, beside seed yield, oil content yield is very, very important. So as very negative correlation, which he has shown, when you decrease erucic acid, oil content is also decreasing. So, so even 1% increase in oil content is very, very big jump as far as oil yield is concerned. So we should, in future, we should target, uh, the, the colleagues of Dr. Yadav should target on improving the uh, total oil content in the seed, which is more, which should be more than 42%. And I'm sure that there is genetic variation for high uh, oil content in brassica species because we have a lot of germplasm available with us, not only within the brassica species, but even across the species. Uh, for biotic stresses, very good efforts were made, for, particularly for fusarium, for identification of a uh, few new diseases and uh, new uh, problems. But uh, as he told in his uh, way forward, sclerotini and orovenki are the really very, very emerging problem in future besides aphid resistance. So for these particular three traits, I always add also alternate applied four traits for which sources of resistance are either not available within a species or non-existent. Even across species, it's very difficult to get resistance source for these. Across genera, probably one can, one, can, one can get. And I can tell even some of the sources of resistance type for alternate of life, we have Camelina styva, Capsula vasopastoris. These two genera are, are resistant to alternate of light and can be utilized in uh, alternate light breeding programs uh, by involving now the approaches which we have uh, in our hands. So uh, as compared to maize, wheat, and rice, the molecular breeding approaches are not extensively being used uh, except a few uh, traits, uh, quality traits, but it's, it's all because we don't have much, we, we were not having much information on genomic resources in the case of uh, brassicas. The genome of brassica gensia was decoded only a few years back. And many of the genes for these uh, traits have not been mapped as yet. So the name I can tell is Clorotinia rot, Orovenki, Aphid, Alternaya blight, White Rust, we have two genes. One of them has become ineffective. The other is still effective and can be utilized in the breeding program. But that's the duty of now the coming generation, which uh, Dr. Yadav was leading a huge group at IRI and uh, working with the very uh, stalwart of Raska breeding program like, like Dr. R. N. Rao, which he mentioned. And I remember that uh, when I met him as a student, I met him in genetics division of IRI and he was totally engrossed in his program on developing a short duration uh, Raska varieties. So, these programs are uh, flagship programs of not only of IRI, but of ICAR. And we always feel proud of telling uh, at all the places that we have such a successful programs and we give example to other people to follow these programs. 
these programs are the outcome of of the genetic resources available with us the genomic resources available with us and very committed scientists which we had in these program like brassica we need to base and and rice all these programs are started with the in uh, with the establishment of iri itself so naturally uh, we we can need people like dr yadav and his colleague to sustain these programs and get, get benefit of that material which our predecessor have generated only then you can make these programs successful so uh, other programs which he is le leading and involved in teaching a uh, very happy to tell that he was very happy to tell that all his five students are well settled i think that is another uh, award which a teacher can get when he see that his students are well settled as a scientist or in other uh, other jobs once they go out of the labs so uh, congratulations dr yadav for uh, from my side as well as from the side of council and my whole group here thank you very much sir thank you very much yes, congratulations for this well deserved av joshi memorial award from indian agriculture research institute with these words i would like to close here thank you uh, dr ak singh dr rashmi for uh, inviting me for this uh, evening i enjoyed both the talks dr firoz hussain and dr dr dk yadav's talk and and i would like to congratulate dr firoz also for this very coveted award with these awards lot of responsibility comes we should not forget that these awards are just the beginning of your academic career and a, a one of the leaves of your academic career but still you have to achieve many more uh, milestones in your academic careers and these are uh, coming with lot of responsibilities means people will expect more high quality research and work from you in future also so with these words thank you thank you very much namaskar thank you thank you very thank you, you doctor saab thank you so much for you know uh, not only summarizing this outstanding presentation by dr dk adav but also defining a clear cut uh, road map for future research uh, in the country and at iri and i assure you uh, that uh, the kind of uh, committed team that we have here we shall be able to uh, take those challenges uh, to solution uh, i'm extremely thankful to you for sparing your valuable time and for being with us the entire afternoon from 2:30 onward uh, it's pleasure congratulations dr yadav dr rashmi over to you thank you sir, thank you, sir. <clears throat> at the outset uh, our heartiest congratulations to dr dk yadav for outstanding contributions and excellent presentation sir For Thank getting you, this coveted uh, six uh, Dr. A. B. Joshi Memorial uh, Award. Thank you, ma'am. Um, it is my pleasure and uh, really honor to propose a formal vote of thanks uh, at the end of successful completion of the last uh, award presentation uh, today. And um, on behalf of director, on behalf of faculty, students, and on my own behalf, I would like to. uh heartfully thank dr t r sharma ddg crop sciences in spite of very busy schedule he joined this program and he joined two of the award lectures so we are so thankful to you for coming inspiring all of us and today's lecture uh, is really a great treat and uh, uh, dr yadav i must say that you have given uh, so much of uh, uh, inspiration and path ahead and your uh, presentation was uh, multi institutional multi disciplinary and a uh, lot of uh, um, uh, good leads that you got by uh, uh, collaborating with many different institutes and also with different scientists so that shows how like popular and how good a researcher you are sir so we are very grateful and thankful to you also for accepting and uh, coming for delivering this particular lecture Uh, i'm thankful to dr ak singh for providing all the logistics all the support guidance for organizing this uh, uh, lecture award series and uh, thanks to all heads of the heads and professors faculty and many of the uh, in charges dr gk matra from uh, patra from uh, mahapatra from iri uh, pune regional station pune he is here and dr nalathambi i can see and uh, many others who, those who have joined this lecture today evening uh, 
I'm highly thankful to them. All the students, faculty, staff, those who were there listening to this uh, uh, very important lecture, I am so thankful to you for successfully uh, completing this our fourth day celebration of 60th Convocation Week program. So with these words and have a good evening and uh, um, good for the future. Thank you all of you. Thank you and a gentle reminder to all of you to kindly join for uh, uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri Memorial Lecture at 11 o'clock, which will be delivered by Dr. K.V. Prabhu and chaired by Honorable Director General Aisha and Secretary Dr. Mahapatra. Please don't miss. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you.